Inshallah, bismillah, uh, we start with the 12th juz now. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa ahlul uqadata min lisani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma la sahla illa ma ja'alta wa sahlatan. So this is Sutul Hud. You, we start with repentance, patience and good deeds. Then the events regarding Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, Hud alayhi salatu wasalam, Salih and Lut and Shu'ib. And ending with Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and then ending with the idea of shunning all evil. And then, of course, we will get into Sutul Yusuf, how Yusuf Islam suffers, how he's tempted, his prison years, and to becoming the king's right-hand man. And right around there, we're going to um, come to the end of the 12th Jews. So, inshallah, let's get started right away, inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> There's no creature. Dabba is any walking creature. Okay, there's no creature on earth illa ala Allahi rizquha, except the rizq is with Allah subhanahu wa taala. All the fishes, all the shrimps, all the octopuses, all the animals in the air, all the animals in the jungle, all the animals in the water, all the animals in the pond, all the animals in the land and the sea, everywhere, Allah subhanahu wa taala has written its rizq. The reason man starves is because of man's own deeds, the misdistribution of wealth, the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer. And so if it, when those things that Allah has kept in his hands, from the risk of the trees to the bees to everything, everything works in a very harmonious way. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is applying his own laws, his laws of distribution that he has then taught man. <coughs> But because man doesn't do that, then you know man suffers. يَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَاهَا مُسْتَوْدَعَهَا There are three, three statements about what does this mean. Uh, we actually came over this term uh, in Surah Al-An'am. I didn't go into detail. مُسْتَقَرَّهَا is the place where the animal lives, according to one opinion. وَمُسْتَوْدَعَهَا is where the animal stores its food. Okay? Or... Mustaqarraha, where the animal lives permanently. Wa mustawda'aha, where the animal may dwell for just a short period of time. It's not its permanent place. Kulu fi kitab mubin, all of this is written in a clear book. You know. Huwa alladhi khalaqa samawati wal ardu fi sittati ayam in kana arshu ala al ma. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days, in six phases. Kana arshu ala al ma. And his arsh was on the water. Now this can have, uh, this is this this part of this ayah is amongst the mutashabihat. No one knows really what this means. Only Allah knows what it means. But it could be because you know, as human knowledge increases, and as you know, sanulihim ayatina, soon we will show them our signs fil afaq wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyan annahu alhaq until it is clear that this Quran is the truth. So when it as time increases and many of the mutashabihat, those verses that we didn't understand, we could begin to understand. So it is possible. Wakan Ashu al alma is referring to the phase in the earth's creation where it was raining and raining and raining and raining, from which uh, the earth began to cool down and the beginning of where life was beginning. Okay, Allahu alam. Allah knows best. Liyabilwakum ayukum ahsan wa amala. To test which of you does the best deeds. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a nation and uh, looks at a people and a nation who does good deeds. If they don't do good deeds, Allah removes them and uh, saves the prophets and those that are with him. This kept happening until an ummah was formed in the form of Bani Israel. The rule with the ummah was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't destroy the ummah, the, the ummah itself. Uh, except in the case of Bani Israel, it has to be done because they rejected the Prophet, the Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now this is going to be made clear as I talk about this. But generally the rule with a ummah is, if you're doing good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you the things of earth, the land, the khilafah, the honor, the glory, all that will be given to you. If you do bad in regards to your relationship with Allah, then the enemies, your enemies will humiliate you and make you suffer and and make you suffer even more. Because if you're an ummah that have to, has to be representing Allah, then 
the instead of the prophet coming and then if you obey the prophet great if you don't obey the prophet you're finished instead of this rule now the ummah itself suffers continuously suffers as long as it's not doing what it's supposed to do but when the ummah stands up to its obligation and uh, shows what islam is like shows to the people humanity what islam is like then both dunya and akhirah are for the believers that belong to an ummah okay لَإِنْ قُلْتَ إِنَّكُمْ مَبْعُوثَنَا مِنْ بَعْدِ مَوْتِ O Prophet ﷺ, if you said to them in Kul, that you will be definitely raised after you're dead, لَيَقُولُنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Then definitely those people who reject the truth they call, they, what do they say? إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ This is just plain magic. This idea that you're going to be raised, you know, uh, after the dead, this is plain magic. وَإِنْ أَخَّرْنَا عَنْهُمْ عَذَابٍ إِلَىٰ أُمَّمٍ مَعْدُودَةٍ وَلَإِنْ أَخَّرْنَا عَنْهُمْ الْعَذَابٍ And if the punishment that's... Because remember, this is very, very important. Again, I have to repeat this. That if messenger comes, you have to obey them, follow the messenger. Otherwise, the punishment of Allah comes. And then you're removed. And this is the point of many of the events mentioned in Quran about Salih and Lut and Shu'ayb, so on and so forth. وَلَئِنْ أَخَّرْنَا عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابِ And if we remove, if we delay, you know, the uh, the punishment, إِلَىٰ أُمَّمٍ مَعْدُودًا To an appointed time, okay, لَيَقُولُونَ مَا يَحْسُبُهُ What is the reason for holding it back? أَلَىٰ Beware. أَلَىٰ can mean know it. For the believers, it's a nice know it, let it be known. And for the disbelievers, you could say it's أَلَىٰ Beware. Okay. Let it be known or let beware, depending upon the sentence, the context, and who's reading it. Then, let it be known. The day when that punishment finally does come, then it won't be averted from them. It can't be changed from them. And that thing will surround them, what they were making fun of. So this is the reason. It's Allah's mercy. You take, You think of Allah's mercy as something you can... You know, you can just mock and, and not realize that it is actually the mercy of Allah. وَلَئِنْ أَزَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِمَّا رَحْمَةٍ ثُمَّ نَزَعْنَاهَا مِنْهُ إِنَّهُ لَيُعُوسًا كَفُورٌ And if we give man a taste from our mercy. وَلَئِنْ أَزَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنَّا رَحْمَةً ثُمَّ نَزَعْنَاهُ And then when we take it from him, meaning the mercy is withdrawn from him, held back from him, إِنَّهُ لَيُعُوسٌ كَفُورٌ Then he is... He needs loses all hope and he becomes completely ungrateful, very ungrateful. وَلَئِنْ أَزَقْنَا نَعْمَهَا بَعْدَ الْبَرَاءَ مَسْحَتُهُ لَيَكُونُنَا ذَهَبَ السَّيِّئَاتُ عَنِّي إِنَّهُ لَفَرِيهٌ فَخُورٌ And then Allah subhanahu wa taala says, and if we give him a أَزَقْنَاهُ نَعْمَ we give him a favor بَعْدَ الْبَرَاءَ after some hardship مَسْحَتُهُ after it has touched him. He says, oh, the difficulty has left me, okay? And it's like he becomes boastful and happy as if he had anything to do with the removal of that difficulty, okay? Overly, fariha is overly happy, you know, where you can't just stop yourself from being happy. أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ أَلَا بِوَرْ It is those people who have sabr and do good deeds. أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ They're the ones who have مَغْفِرَةٌ and أَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ Allah make us amongst them. فَلَعَلَّكَ تَارِيُكُنْ بَعْدَ مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْكَ وَطَاقَ بِهِ صَدْرُكَ So so over here, you know, the Prophet may have been hesitant or may not have been hesitant, but Allah is talking as if the Prophet may have been hesitant to read to them the ayat saying, no, no, no signs for you guys anymore. That's it. Those of you that are going to believe are going to believe. Those that are not going to believe are not going to believe. فَلَعَلَّكَ تَارِكٌ تَارِكٌ بَعْدَ مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْكَ Or perhaps Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you will leave out some of the things revealed to you. وَضَاقَتْ بِهِمْ صَدْرُكَ 
and your chest shrinks. An yaqulu because they say, Lola unzila alayhi kanzun aw jaa ma'ahu malak or come to him with him an angel. Innama anta nadhir. You are just a warner. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in wakil. Allah is over all things wakil. He is the disposer and the manager of all things. He is the one who decides what will happen and what will not happen. If you will be given a miracle, if you won't be given a miracle, a <clears throat> man was reaching a stage now where he knew the difference between the supernatural and the natural. In the beginning, man was in a stage where he couldn't make a distinction between supernatural and natural. If fire was coming from the sky to accept your sadaqah, that was just as natural for you as uh, seeing a bird in the sky that's flying. Okay, that was just. A, but then, as man be, began to differentiate between natural and supernatural, then these be, things became limited. The final person with the most miracles was Isa a.s. But after that, it seems like Allah's rule, ruling was that no more miracles. And also because the Prophet was the last Prophet, he had to do everything with his hard work. No more manna and salwa. No more, you know, hitting the staff and getting twelve wells. Everything will be through hard work. They say, did he did he invent this? You know, they say, did you invent this? Before it came, come with a single surah. But before that, this surah was revealed first. So this shows you kind of like, this surah is when this discussion is still happening. So Allah says, okay, even bring ten surahs, and it'll go down to even bring one surah equal to this. Come with ten surahs like this. Uh, come with ten surahs like this, right? Uh, that have been invented. That okay, you go ahead, you invent something like this. And call and call uh, whoever you want other than Allah in kuntum sadiqin. Maybe this is a good time to actually share with you the difference between. A Quranic recitation and the poetry that they had in the time of Jahiliyyah. So let me do that inshallah ta'ala. So here is an example of Jahiliyyah poetry. So you can understand where was man's peak of able to exp being able to express themselves. So also look at the content and then also the kind of like the just imagine somebody trying to memorize this and somebody trying to like read this like in terms of memory, right? Also look at the difficulty of the language versus the easy ease of the language. The ease of memorization and then the meaningfulness of the words. So here is a small taste. So let the sword judge in the face of the enemy. You know, hukmu saifuka, right? Hukmu saifuka. Let your safe, let your safe, safe is like your sword. So let your safe judge or decide. And choose for yourself a rank. واختار لنفسك منزلا واختار نفسك منزلا Right? You will be lofty in. تعالوا بي Okay, that you will be high in. أو مت كريما تحت ظلش قصطل or some tree, right? So this is the type, like killing people, killing the sword, don't obey the commands. You know, this is the type of content we're talking about. Right. موت الفتاة في عزة خير له موت الفتاة to die young and, and to die uh, في العزة خير له is better for him من, من أن 
bayatta asiran that you would become like a you know a POW caught as a prisoner of war. Muhammad is the air, the sword of India, which is a very famous sword. Uh, there's actually a very interesting book written by the name of Muhammad. Um, anyway, I won't go into that right now. Uh, So, you know, this is the type of thing, uh, like I caused Nakbatu uh, Bani uh, Hariqa. I caused problems for Bani Hariqa, right? Nakbata Lamma Ta'anatu Samima Qalbi Khiyal. When I stabbed the best of the best uh, of them. And I killed the best of their knights and the sons of Rabia. And then he names them. I am the son of the black woman. Right. وَأَنَا إِبْنُ السَّوْدَاءِ So you guys get the point, right? So now compare this to the ease of memorization to the uh, to the uh, to the power of the message, right? <coughs> so, am yaquluna iftara, bal fa'tu bi ashra suratim mithli. Do they say that he invented this? Qul fa'tu bi ashra suratim mithli, muftarayat, okay? And if you invent, what, and, and go ahead and invent it, okay? Wad'u man istata'atum min dunillah. Other than Allah, go ahead, call whoever you want. In kuntum sadiqeen, if you are truly truthful. So here's a, a comparison between, in terms of language. Now, of course, you, we don't, we, all of us, don't know Arabic in the way that people of that time would have appreciated it. But you can still appreciate some aspects of the Jahiliya poetry compared to the Quranic language. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُ لَكُمْ فَعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا أُنزِلَ بِإِلْمِ اللَّهِ And if they don't respond to you, and they won't respond to you, فَعْلَمُوا Then know it well. إِنَّمَا أُنزِلُوا بِإِلْمِ اللَّهِ Look, you're the best at poetry in Arabia, right? So go ahead, make something equal to Quran. Don't ask for more signs. This is the sign for you. إِنَّمَا أُنزِلَ بِإِلْمِ اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ there is that there is no divine other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَأَلْ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Do you surrender to him or not? مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا وَزِينَتَهَا نُوَفِّي إِلَيْهِمْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ بِهَا وَهُمْ فِيهَا لَا يُبْخَسُونَ 
Man kana yuridu al-hayatu dunya whoever wants the life of this world world was zinatuha and its zina its beauty okay nuwafi ilayhim a'malahum we will repay you for your deeds you know you've done good deeds we will repay you fiha in it wa hum fiha la 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 yubkhasun you know whatever good deeds you do you'll get it in this world for you you won't get anything for you in, for yourself in the hereafter you do good deeds you'll get your good deeds dunya sijun al mu'min dunya is a jail for the believer wa jannatu al kafir and the kafir gets all his good deeds here and now ulaika allazi ulaika alladhi laysa lahum fi al akhirati illa an nar then these people have nothing in the hereafter except fire wa habitat ma sana'u and all that they have manufactured and done it's all it's all sana'u fiha batil wa sana'u sana'u fiha wa wa batilun and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you it's your good deeds will be no more and everything will be batil falsehood for what you have done okay afaman kana ala bayyata mir rabbihi is the one who is on a clear uh you could say evidence or knowledge from his rabb yatluhu shahida minhu min qablihi and the other meaning of this ayah which is also even more interesting afaman kana ala bayyinatin mir rabbi the one who has unclear evidence from his rabb meaning what the nur the knowledge the a prior the fitra of man already knows certain things he knows that when he looks at the universe there's one god he knows that this life can't be meaningless he feels like that this life must have a purpose he must feel like that there must be you know what comes around goes around so he already had some of these truths within him then walatlu hu shahida minhu min qabli then somebody recites to him the verses of the quran confirming that which he already internally already kind of felt from before okay kitab musa in, an example of that is kitab musa imama wa rahma in the book of musa alayhi salatu wasalam musa alayhi salatu wasalam was imam and rahma ulaika yu'minuna bi and they believe in it wa man yakfur bihi min al ahzab amongst the different groups uh, different factions that the the jews or the christians would have so fanar mawidahu and then the fire is his destination that's promised fala takun fi miryatin minhu so don't be in doubt regarding this innahu lal haqq mir rabbik this is the truth from your rabb walakin aktsara an-nas la yu'minun but majority of the people the the fact is that they don't believe wa man wa man adlamu mimman iftara ala Allah al-kadhiba and who can be more unjust more unjust than the one who invents a lie against Allah ulaika yu'ridun ala rabbihim right these the, the these will be yu'ridun they will be brought before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented before allah wa yaquluna ashhadu wa yaqulu ashhadu haula'i alladhi kadhabu ala rabbihim ala la'natullahi ala adh-dhalimin so they will so uh, they will say are these the ones who lied against their lord they will be brought before allah and it will be asked uh, ashhadu haula alladhi kadhabu ala rabbi rabbihim are these the ones who were the witness you know the witnesses that uh, that lied about allah ala la'natullahi ala adh-dhalimin the beware the la'na the the the, the deprivation of allah's mercy because la'na means to take away the mercy la'natullahi ala adh-dhalimin so the la'na of allah is on the people that do wrong alladhina yasudduna an sabilillah and those who take away move people away or stop people from the way of allah wa yabghuna ha iwaja and then they want to make the straight path crooked wa hum bil akhirati hum kafirun and they are in regards to the hereafter uh, they completely deny it disbelieve it reject it even though if a person's on fitra then a person will want to believe in the day of judgment will like the idea like the idea of believing in the day of judgment unless you've done something terribly wrong or have terrible intentions in this life that then you deny the hereafter ulaika lam yakunu mu'jizina fil ard the days will not uh, you know these will the, lam yakun mu'jizin they can't be weakened or caused to be failed on earth you know whatever they're doing this is not going to affect allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the least bit wa ma kana lahum min duni llahi awliya and they have no awliya no protector other than allah yudaif lahum al'adhab in fact the punishment will be doubled 
فدم فما يستطيعون سمع سمع وما كانوا يبصرون but the fact is they don't have spiritual insight they can't hear sp spiritual truths and they can't see spiritual things okay you can't see spiritual signs and they can't hear spiritual truths why because their their inner self itself has been corrupted these are the people who have wronged themselves and they have gone to the wrong way because of the lies that they invent and definitely they are in the hereafter they are the ones who will be the losers Indeed, those people who had Iman and then they did the right deeds, they did the good deeds, they followed the Prophet وَخْبَتُوا and then they humbled themselves The other problem is not believing in the hereafter, not being responsible for your, not wanting to be responsible for your actions is a sign of arrogance. An arrogant man lies knowing he's lying and he doesn't care that other people know he's lying. And the same thing as rejection, rejecting the truth. Only an arrogant person rejects the truth knowing that it's the truth. Jannah, they are the people of Jannah, whom fiha khalidun, in it they will remain. You know, the example of the fariqain, the two parties, the two groups, is like the blind and the deaf. والبصير والسمع the one who can see and can hear هل يستويان مثلا are these two both equal أفلا تذكرون will you not ponder will you not think right لقد أرسلنا نوحا إلى قومه إني لكم نذير مبين and indeed we sent نوح عليه الصلاة والسلام to his nation he said إني لكم نذير مبين I'm a warner to you that's giving you a clear warning ألا لا تعبدوا إلا الله. Don't worship anyone other than Allah. إني أخاف عليكم عذاب يوم عظيم. إني أخاف. I fear for you a day a punishment that will be great. فقال الملأ الذين كفروا من قومه and said the the establishment, right, from the people who denied amongst his people. ما نراك إلا بشرا بشرا مثلنا. We see you as no one other than a human like us. وَمَا نَرَاكَ إِتْ وَمَا نَرَاكَ إِتْ تَبَعَكَ إِلَّا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ هُمْ أَرَاذِلُونَ بَادِيَ الرَّعِي And you know, we don't see anyone follow you except, you know, except those who are the lowest amongst us. Okay? وَمَا نَرَا لَكُمْ عَلَيْنَا مِنْ فَضْلِ بَلْ ذُنُنْتُمْ كَاذِبِينَ And we don't think you have any, you know, special... status over us that we should listen to you and but in fact we think that you are a liar this is what they said to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam qala ya qawmi araaytum in kuntu ala bayyinatin min rabbi wa atani rahmatan min indi fa ummiyat alaykum you'll find this over and over again in this surah ala bayyinatin min rabbi that I was an evident, clear uh, way from my Rabb. This is before revelation. So he is saying, "Yaqomi araaytum in kuntu ala bayyinatim min Rabbi." Did you not see that I wasn't clear, clear way from my Rabb? Meaning, I was a good person. I didn't lie. I didn't steal. I didn't do anything wrong. You know, I was a good person. I was amongst you. And then, wa ata ni rahmatan min indihi. And then Allah gave me rahma from Himself. Meaning, what revelation started coming to me, right? Now, that revelation that's coming to me, you can't see that. فَأُمِّيَتْ عَلَيْكُمْ That revelation that's coming to me is is blind. It make, you're blind to that. You can't see that. فَأُلْزِمُوكُمْ مُّهَا So then I can't, you know, I can't force that. وَأَنْتُمْ كَارِهُونَ I can't force that. I can't make that stick to you. Right? I, it's just that the revelation comes to me and you can't see it. But you know before how my life was, what type of person I was. And then Allah gave me revelation. And then now you can't see that, but, you know, I can't force you at the same time. And then he says, يَا قَوْمِ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مَالِ Look, I don't ask you for money regarding this. إِنْ أَجْرِيَ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ My reward is with Allah. وَمَا أَنَا بِطَارِدِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And I'm not going to drive away the believers. إِنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا إِنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا رَبِّهِمْ They will definitely meet their Rabb. 
وَلَكِنِّي أَرَاكُمْ قَوْمًا تَجْحَلُونَ But I see you as a people that are argumentative, are, are jahil, tajhalun. You don't know what you're talking about. You're ignorant. Right? They perhaps wanted Nuh to separate himself with the people that had believed in him. The ones that they felt, you know, the arrogant ones felt uh, that these are too low of a people. And this is exactly the type of character that doesn't accept the truth even when he sees it. Uh, يَا قَوْمِ مَنْ يُنصُرُنِي مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنْ تَرَدْتُهُمْ O my people, who will protect me from Allah if I drive them away? The believers. أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Do you not think, do you not ponder about what you're asking me to do? وَلَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنْ دِي خَزَائِنُ اللَّهِ And I don't say to you that I have the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with me. I'm just a prophet. Compared to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'm just a prophet. But from us to a prophet, a prophet is a very high rank. Right? وَلَا أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبِ And nor do I know the unseen. I don't know the unseen things. Those things, to everyone, that thing is unseen for which Allah has not revealed to that person. And for every person, whether prophet or not, what is unknown is more than what is known. وَلَا أَقُولُ لَكُمْ إِنِّي malak. Nor do I say to you, I'm an angel. وَلَا أَقُولُ لِلَّذِينَ تَزْدَرِي عَيُونَكُمْ لَنْ يُؤْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا Nor do I say though about those people that you find little in your eyes. You find them like to be, you know, you look down upon them with your eyes. لَنْ يُؤْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا Allah can give them so much good. Allah can place them in Jannah. Allah can give them, those people who have nothing today can have big businesses tomorrow. So in all that way. But khaira in its ultimate form is that, you know, what you'll get in the hereafter. That, you know, you look down upon them here, but they have higher ranks than you in the next world. Allahu a'lamu bima fi anfusikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what is in yourselves. إِنِّي إِذَنْ لَمِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ If I was to kick these people away, and like you want me to do, then I would be amongst the wrongdoing people. قَالُوا And they said to Nuh والسلام, in response, يَا نُوهُ قَدْ جَادَلْتَنَا فَأَكْثَرْتَ جِدَالَنَا فَأْتِنَا بِمَا تُعِدُنَا إِن كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ They said to Nuh والسلام, You've now argued with us, and you know, we're tired of this argument basically. You've argued with us and argued with us too much argument. Okay? فَأْتُونَا بِمَا تَعِيدُنَا Then come with what you've promised what promised us. Go ahead, give us what you promised us. إِن كُنْتَ مِنَ الصَّادِقِينَ If you are truly truthful. If you're truthful, then bring that promise, which is the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ إِنَّمَا يَأْتِيكُمْ بِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ إِنْ شَاءَ وَمَا كُنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ So he said, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam, he said, Allah will bring it if he wills, right? And, وَمَا كُنْتُمْ بِمُعْجِزِينَ And when Allah brings it, you can't stop it from happening. وَلَا يَنْفَعُكُمْ نُصْحِي إِنْ أَرَدْتُ أَنْ أَنْصَحَ لَكُمْ And my good sincerity towards you is of no benefit, even if I want it to be sincere to you, it's sincere advice to you, it's no benefit to you if you don't want نصيحة. إِنْ كَانَ اللَّهُ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يُغْوِيَكُمْ And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intends to put you on the wrong way, هُوَ رَبُّكُمْ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُونَ he is your Rabb and you have to return back to him. Am yakuluna iftara? Or so did they say that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu invented this? He invented these stories? He invented these conversations? This in conversation that's taking place between Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam and his people, did Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, did he invent this? Am yakuluna iftara? Qul in iftaraytahu fa... fa فَعَلَيَّ إِجْرَامِ وَأَنَا بَرِئٌ بِمَا تُجْرِمُونَ If I invented it, in, in if تَرَيْتُ فَعَلَيَّ إِجْرَامِ If I invented it, then, you know, the sin is upon me. I will have to bear the consequences because, you know, I, I, I will have to bear the consequences of what I'm saying. وَإِنِّي بَرِئٌ مِّمَّا تُجْرِمُونَ But I am innocent of what you are doing. That you're not even able to listen to simple advice from me regarding uh, regarding the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're acting, you're not even 
you're you're acting with me the way people were acting towards Nuh and we know what happened to that nation. And we revealed to Nuh No one will believe in your nation now. Your people, they're not going to believe in you. Except for those people that have already believed. They're believed. فَلَا يَبْتَسِسْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ So now don't be, uh, don't lose hope or don't be grieved or don't be distressed بِمَا كَانُوا يَفْعَلُونَ because of what they're doing. Those that were going to believe, believed. The good have come to you. They've responded to the call of the truth. They've responded to the call that is according to human nature. The rest, they haven't responded to you. And that's the way it's going to be. Now go ahead and make the ship before our eyes. Before our eyes meaning with our instruction, with our mercy, with our commandment, with our blessings. And we... Uh, and our uh, our 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 wahina, make the ship in front with our in front of our eyes and with our revelation, the instructions that will come to you. Wala tu khatibni fil ladina zalamu, and don't address me regarding the people that have done wrong. Innahum mughraqoon, these are people that are now going to be drowned. That's it. So now here is Nuh alayhi salatu salam making a boat in the middle of a desert, right? And now they were they were already saying to him, you're lying, you're crazy, and all that. And now that's like, dude, this guy is really crazy. Look, he's making a boat in the middle of the desert. Do you see that? Do you see him making a boat in the middle of the desert? Like, he's really lost it now. And he was constructing the ship, okay? He was making... He made the ship. And every time one of the nobilities or important VIP people, you know, they were passing by, right? Uh, they would, you know, make fun of him. They would uh, mock him. Do you. He said. Oh, you're making fun of me today, right? فَإِنَّمَا نَسْخِرُ مِنْكُمْ We will be making fun of you. We'll be laughing at you. كَمَا تَسْخَرُونَ Like you're laughing at us today. When that punishment comes, you'll see then what happens. فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ يَأْتِي بِهِ عَذَابٌ يُجْزِيهِ وَيُحِلُّ عَلَيْهِ عَذَابٌ مُقِيمٌ Now they still had time. Even at the last minute, Nuh a.s. is trying to get them into the boat but like the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, those that were going to believe were going to believe. فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ يَعْتِي بِعَذَابِ And you're going to know who will get the punishment, right? And who, مَنْ يَعْتِي عَذَابٌ يُخْزِيهِ Who will be humiliated, okay? وَيُحِلُّ عَلَيْهِ عَذَابٌ And upon whom the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be lasting will be there forever. Hatta idha jaa amruna until our command came wa faratan nur. And then what happened is, you know the oven of one of the people or the oven started to overflow. Wa faratan nur. Wa qul nihmil fiha min kulli zawjayn ithnayn. And we said carry in the boat two of every pair. What does it mean? To carry two of every pair, right? Meaning of every animal, of every animal in the entire earth, every two pairs of every animal. No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. It means nahmil fiha, carry in the boat min kulli two of a pair of every type of animal that you had, because if you have let's say a hundred goats, you can't take a hundred goats on the ship. You take two of them, male, one male, one female, right? And then you have a cow that's domesticated. So of the normal animals that you had that were in your domestication, take two of those. This comes in contrast to what 
the Bible teaches. Okay? And the Bible has other mistakes regarding this story too. Wahluka uh, and your the people that are with you. Illa man sabaka alayhi al Except uh, those people regarding, you can take the, your family except for the people that you, the word has been given about, which was his wife, uh, that she would stay uh, behind. Waman aman, and those who believed in you, they can go. Wama amanahu, wama amana ma'ahu illa qaleen. And did not believe in him except for a few. A few people believed in him. You know, some riwayat say less, basically there were less than a hundred people, right? They believed in him and they were on the boat. قَالَ إِرْكُبُوا فِيهَا بِسْمِ اللَّهِ مَجْرِيهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا مَجْرِيهَا وَمُرْسَاهَا Now, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam said, in the name of Allah, right? I, you know, irkabu fiha, like get on the boat, embark on the boat, right, in the name of Allah. Majriha is its course, and murusaha is the anchoring of it, its final destination. Inna rabbi la ghafur rahim, indeed my rabb is ghafur rahim. Wa hiya tajri bihim fi mawjin kal jibal. And this ship that Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam made and it's uh, i'll talk about this i'll show you the picture of the ship and all of that and the story of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam some aspects of it i'll be sharing with you that have to do with the whole world really because every culture knew about this story okay and it, this boat sailed with them through uh through the waves you know through the waves like mountains but now the nuhun ibnuhu and as these waves were coming, right, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam calls his son. Nada ibnuhu, nada nuhu ibnuhu wa kana fi ma'zili. And uh, his son was, uh, in, it was, you know, he was away, okay, ma'zili. So Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam says, Ya bunaya irkab ma'ana, come on, come on to the boat with us. Because Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam was promised that his family would be saved. And don't be with the people who are kafir. Don't be with the people who are disbelievers. He said, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Sa'awi. I will take refuge ila jabal to the mountain. I'll go on the mountain. Ya simuni min al It will protect me from the water. The father Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam says to his son, La asimu al yawma min amri Allah. Oh my son, there is no defending you from the commandment of Allah to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Illa man rahim, except for who Allah has mercy upon. Wa hala baynahum al mawj. And just as this conversation was taking place, a wave came. And just separated them and took him. And he became of those people that just drowned. Right in front of the eyes of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. وَقِيلَ يَا إِرْضِعِي إِبْلِعِي مَائِكِ وَيَا سَمَائِي أَقْلِعِي وَغَيْذَ الْمَاءِ وَقُذِيَ الْأَمَرِ وَصَوَّتْ أَلَى جُودِي So over here I will show you. وَقِيلَ بُعْدًا لِلْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ so now it was said, Ya ardai ibli'i ma'iki. O earth, now swallow the water that had come out, right, from the, uh, in the oven, from under the earth, and then it was raining on top. And so water was coming from many directions, and it had, uh, basically, the water had overtaken this whole area, okay, where majority of the human beings were living in this area, you can say, at that time. So Allah said, Ya Ya Ardu Ibn'i, go ahead, swallow the water. Ma'iki, Ya Sama'i Alqi'i, and O sky, right? Now, uh, withhold your rain. Wa al and the water, then Ghida al the water like became less, it subsided. Wa Qudi al Amr, and the affair was done. Every, everyone who had not believed was now killed, and all the people that had believed were on the ship. And was al Judi, and the ship came to rest on the Mount of Judi. Waqila bought lil qawmid and it was said to the people, away with the wrongdoing people, away with them. 
Now, in what form it was said, how it was said, meaning, uh, was it after they drowned or while they were drowning? Okay, away with them. Get away, get, get them done. Get, get the punishment done with them. وَنَادَ نُوهُ رَبُّ قَالَ رَبِّ إِنْ إِبْنِ مِنْ أَهْلِي And Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam said, Oh Allah, my son is part of my family. وَإِنَّ وَعْدَكَ الْحَقِّ And your promise is true. You promised me that you would save my family. وَأَنْتَ أَحْكَمُ الْحَاكِمِينَ And you're the best of judges. قَالَ يَا نُوهُ إِنَّهُ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِكْ Or Nuh, this is not part of your family. Now there are two opinions of this. He's not part of your family, meaning... If he's not a believer, he's not part of your family. Or the other opinion is, so one opinion of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is on this, because it's an interesting issue. So this is why I'm opening this up a little bit. إِنَّهُمْ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ الصَّالِحِ He is an action that is not righteous. So one opinion is, a majority of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they hold this opinion. إِنَّهُ عَمَلٌ غَيْرُ الصَّالِحِ He is not part of your family means that he is not really from your lineage. He is not from your sulb. He is not from your... Uh, you know, your wife basically had a son of someone else. This is one opinion. The Ahlul Sunnah Jama'ah, because of the ayat that come, At-Tayyibina lil-Tayyibat, wal-Khabithina lil-Khabithat, and, and other uh, ayat like that, some of the, or majority of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah have said, no, 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 this cannot, that this was his son, but he was not accepted as his son because he didn't believe in what Nuh alayhi uh, salatu believed in. فَلَا تَسْأَلْنِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Oh, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, don't ask me about the things for which you have no knowledge. إِنِّي أُعِيذُكَ وَأَن تَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And I ask, I, 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 I أُعِيذُكَ, I warn you, I advise you, I give you advice, أَن تَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ That you should be from the ignorant ones. Don't be of the ignorant ones. فَلَا رَبِّي إِنِّي أَعُوذُ بِكَ الْأَسَلَ لَكَ بِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ he said, Oh Allah, I seek refuge from you about asking about something for which I have no knowledge. And you know, despite the fact he's not complaining, he, his son drowning in front of him, all this happened, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, please, unless you forgive me, and have mercy on me, I also would be amongst those that are losers. قِيلَ يَا نُوحِ اِحْبِتْ بِالسَّلَامِ So, اِحْبِتُ, if you remember, came in Surah Al-Baqarah, go down from here. So this is like, يَا نُوحِ اِحْبِتْ بِالسَّلَامِ Now, Nuh, now you go down or you disembark from the ship, بِالسَّلَامِ in salam, minna from us. وَبَرَكَاتِنَ عَلَيْكَ And for baraka to be on you. وَعَلَىٰ أُمُمٍ مِمَّنْ مَعَاكْ and the many nations that are with you, meaning in your sulb, in your progeny, with through your three sons that are with you, there are many, many nations that are going to come. وَأُمَمًا سَنُمَتِّعُهُمْ And these nations, we will give them some enjoyment of this dunya. ثُمَّ يَسُومُهُمْ مِنَّ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And then there will be many of them that will be touched by our punishment, that will be very grievous. تِلْكَ أَنْبَاءُ الْغَيْبِ نُوحِي إِلَيْكَ these are the unseen things that we reveal to you, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَعْلَمُهَا أَنْتَ وَلَا قَوْمُكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ هَذَا You didn't know about these things, nor did your people know about these things. <coughs> but <coughs> the, the people of Prophet Muhammad can now verify this with the people of the book and say, yes, this is a story that has come to Muhammad and this is a story that is with the people of the book. Indeed, the ending is with the people who have taqwa. Now, over here, وَإِلَىٰ عَادٍ أَخَاهُمْ هُودًا And to Ad were the people, was their brother Hud, alayhi salatu wasalam. Hud, alayhi salatu wasalam, was sent to them. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهِ He said, O oh my people, worship Allah. مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِهِ You have no divine, no authority, no no God other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in kun, in in antum illa muftarun, you are not but inventors of falsehood. You made these false idols and everything. You're just inventing falsehood. Okay. Ila adin ahahum huda. Now, before I continue about hud alayhi salatu wasalam, I just want to mention a few things that you will find interesting uh, about Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Very, very, very interesting. 
the first is that the Bible says the boat of Nuh والسلام, would be in a mount called Ararat. But Quran over here that we just read, Pastawa ala judi, okay, uh, that the ship landed in a place in the mountain called Judi, okay. So regarding this, uh, I want to actually, inshallah, uh, show you this video. An article published by the Observer states that the Noah's Ark has been found. And what's interesting here is that the Quran and the Bible give two distinct accounts of the location of the Ark. And as we noticed, the Quran was correct and the Bible was wrong. Uh, the, the article here states, Noah's Ark has been found on the Turkish-Iranian border, 32 kilometers from Mount Ararat, according to the leader of a team of scientists that has been investigating the site for six years. The Turkish government is so convinced by the findings <coughs> that after years of intransigence, it has designated the site one of special archaeological interest and agreed to its excavation next summer. The remote site contains a buried ship-like object resting an altitude of 2,300 meters. At 170 meters long and 45 meters wide, it conforms almost exactly to the 300 cubit by 50 cubit boat that God told Noah to build according to Genesis 6 in the Bible. On surrounding terrain, the American and Middle Eastern scientists have identified huge stones with holes with holes carved at one end, which they believe are drogue stones, dragged behind ships in the ancient world to stabilize them. Radar soundings indicate unusual levels of iron oxide distribution. Saleh Bayrak Tutan head of geology at Turkey's Atat Ataturk University estimates the edge of the vessel at more than 100,000 years. Estimates the age of the vessel at more than 100,000 years. And he quotes as saying, it is a man-made structure and for sure it is Noah's Ark, end quote. The site is directly below the mountain of Al-Judi, named in the Quran as the Ark's resting place. And I'll mention this verse after. David Fazold, an American shipwreck specialist with no religious affiliation, has led the investigation. He says subsurface radar surveys of the site has produced, quote, very good pictures, end quote. And he continues saying the radar imagery at about 25 meters down from the stern is so clear that you can count the floorboards between the walls, end quote. He believes the team has found the fossilized remains of the upper deck and that the original reed substructure has disappeared, but the findings have infuriated the scores of Christian Ark hunters who travel to Turkey convinced the Ark will only be found on Mount Ararat. Fazold, who also calls himself an archaeologist, also argues that it was not a great flood that pushed the Ark into the mountains. He says it was an astrono astronomical event causing a tectonic upheaval a tidal bore causing gravitational pull in the ocean waters that forced the boat into the mountains." End quote. Some of Fazold's teams of geophysicists and geologists are reserving final judgment until the excavation and carbon dating. But in a British TV series on the environment next month, team member Vendel Jones, a Middle East archaeologist and inspiration for film character Indiana Jones, says it is quote, between maybe and probably, end quote, that they have found Noah's Ark. Uh, the Quranic verse, so that's the end of the article, the Quranic verse detailing about the resting place of the Noah's Ark is found in chapter Hud, uh, verse 44. The verse says, And it was said, O earth, swallow up your water, and O sky, withhold your rain. And the water was diminished, meaning made to subside, and the decree of Allah was fulfilled. The destruction of the people of Nuh or Noah السلام, and it, the ship rested on Mount Judi and it was said, Away with the people who are the Dhalimun, the polytheists and the wrongdoers. So just to, the point of evidence that it rested, the Quran says specifically that it rested on Mount Judi. The 49th <coughs> verse of the same chapter says, this is the news of the unseen which we reveal unto you, O Muhammad may the peace and blessings be upon him. 
Neither you nor your people knew them before this, so be patient. Surely the good end is for the muttaki, muttakun, meaning the pious. Duty, whereas the Bible says in Genesis 8.4, Then the ark rested on the mountains of Ararat. And this is in the New King James Version, Genesis 8, uh, verse 4. And the, the pictures you are now seeing are just pictures from the website, uh, fatwa-online.com. The link to this article and the pictures will be posted under the more information section to the right of this video. So we'll end this here. Um, let me just get rid of this. Okay. So there's also scientific evidence that the flood did happen. This is a fact. Um, you know, the scientists say somewhere between 7,500 to 18,000 years ago, there was definitely a flood. There's a layer in that whole area. And I'll talk about this because the Bible says the flood happened all over the world. And the Quran does not say this. You know, Quran specifically uh, points only to the people of Nuh in that area. So, um... So you could see 21 reasons news uh, world uh, wide flood never happened. It wasn't worldwide, but it was local. So yes, news flood may have been happened, but it was not the whole world. And why they're talking about this is because this is what the Bible says. The Bible says it was the whole world. Whereas Quran, as you know, generally that is the rule that the punishment of Allah comes to the people that the Prophet was sent to. Right. Over here, you can also look at the Bible in terms of the animals, right? Over there in Quran, it just said take one each of each pair, but in the Bible, uh, something similar is there, but not exactly the same. Take you seven pairs of each kind of clean animal, male in its fe a male and its mate, and one pair of every unclean ma animal, male and its mate. Uh, so this part is uh, not according to Quran, uh, and nor is the fact that the uh, the flood happened in the entire world. Okay, um, so um, the other thing I wanted to show you was uh, yes, this is the important part. Flood stories from around the world. What does that mean? That means the story of Nuh والسلام, is not just in the Bible, not just in the Quran, not just amongst the Abrahamic faiths, but the story of Abraham is literally in every part of the world. The, the, you know, it is in the first stories of Homer. It's in the Gilgamesh. It's in the, it's in the Greek. It's in the Ro, the, the, the Romanians, the Celtics, the, the Turkey, Africa, the Hinduism. Even they have the concept of the Mahanu, the man who came in the boat. Um, the, the story of Nuh is a story that every single almost major nation in the world, every ma major culture in the world knew about, talked about, was part of their aqidah, was part of their belief system. Um, in the Philippines, in the Sumatra, and so on and so forth, you know, you could just go over each one of these uh, uh, cities or places uh, had the story. Uh, you know, amongst the Europe's, the Greeks had the story of Nuh والسلام, the story of the flood, right? These are all different civilizations that had the story. People have become rebellious. Autumn said, he will destroy all he made and return to the earth of such and such water um, was its original state. Autumn will remain in the form of a serpent. And, you know, it goes on in one way or the other. The story of the flood is there in every major civilizations, the Babylonian, the Assyrians, uh, the Chaldeans, the Hebrews, of course, you know, that's Islamic, the Persians, Orastrianism, and Cameroon, and you can go on and on uh, talking about how the story of Nuh is there in every single culture, which I find particularly very interesting, that we know scientifically the flood happened a number two uh obviously if the whole world you know the stuns the the universe or the humankind started from the uh because majority of the humans at least were in that area 
and the progeny that was going to continue, continue was going to be from Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is perhaps one of the reasons that every civilization, every culture seems to have this story in them throughout the whole world. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to show that to you. So, uh, now it comes to about Hud alayhi salatu wasalam. He was also a, a prophet sent to the basically Arabia, <coughs> or near the Arabian area, and um, so. قالوا يهود ما جئت ببينة وما نحن بتارك آلهتنا عن قولك وما نحن لك بمؤمنين. Okay, على بينة you can find this over here too. جئت ببينة قالوا يهود. They said يهود. يهود عليه الصلاة والسلام. ما جئتنا ببينة. You've not brought to us any clear evidence. Whereas the Quranic claim is the clear evidence is within us. The knowledge of Allah is within us. The truth is within us. وَمَا نَحْنُ بِتَارِكٍ Nor are we going to leave. آلِهَتِنَا are gods. أَنْ قَوْلِكَ Because you said so. وَمَا نَحْنُ لَكَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And we're not going to believe in what you're saying, O you, O Hud. إِنْ نَقُولُ اِعْتَرَاكَ بَعْدُ آلِهَتِنَا بِسُوءٍ And they said, we don't think, except that one, you know, our gods have just taken you. Uh, they have like possessed you, grasped you, besuwed something evil. All uh, because of your denying the gods, now you have become like this madman. All in the ushud Allah, Nuhud alayhi salatu wasalam said, "No, I make Allah my witness, who is the true God." Wa ushidu inni bari um bari ummi ma tushrikun, and I I am free, and I'm bizarre, and I'm done with, and I'm sick. I'm free from that thing that you do shirk with. Okay? Other than him. Then go ahead, plot against me all you can. And don't give me any, like, new way. Don't give me any respite. Okay? Don't give me any, like, chances. Okay? Go ahead. You think you have the real God? I have the real God with me. إِنِّي تُوَكَلْتُ عَلَى اللَّهِ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ I trust on Allah, over Allah. رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ Who's my caretaker and your caretaker. My master and your master. وَمَا مِنْ دَابَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ آخِذٌ بِنَاصِيَتِهَا And there's no uh, creature except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holds it with its forehead. Meaning its destiny. It's it's everything about the uh, this nasiyatin is where you could say is either metaphorically used or, it, or there may be some spiritual aspect to it or some real aspect to it because we do know behind this nasia, this area behind the brain is the area of our brain that makes our decisions and our life is the choices we make. Okay? So, وَمَا مِن دَابَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ آخِذٌ بِالنَّاصِيَتِهَا There's not any creature except Allah takes it by its forelock, meaning all its destiny what it will get, what it won't get, what its providence will be, where it will die, when it will die. All these things are أَخِزَةٌ نَاصِيَتِهَا إِنَّ رَبِّيَ لَا صِرَاتٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ Indeed, my Rabb is on the straight path. فَإِنِّي فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَقَدْ أَبْلَغْتُكُمْ رَسَالَاتُ رَبِّي Look, if you turn your backs, I have already conveyed to you the message from uh, from my Rabb. فَإِن تَوَلَّوْ فَقَدْ أَبْلَغْتُ مَا أُرْسِلْتُ بِي I've conveyed to you what I've been sent with إِلَيْكُمْ to you وَيَسْتَخْلِفْ رَبِّي قَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He may replace you with another people right وَلَا تُصْرِفُهُ شَيْئًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right you can وَلَا تَضُرُّونَهُ شَيْئًا And you cannot harm him affect him cause evil to him شيئا anything you can't Allah is بريء he's above and beyond this إن ربي على كل شيء حفيظ Allah سبحانه وتعالى is the protector of all things he will remove you and replace you with another nation if you reject now how is this this is the warning being given to the people of مكة that this would happen to them if they did this with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and we, as we already read in Surah Tawbah and Surah Al Anfal that was the first installment and Surah Al Anfal of Badr of the punishment of Allah, because now Allah was going to punish the people through the hands of the believers, rather than something supernatural happening. وَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا And when our command came, نَجَّيْنَا هُودٍ And when we, our command came, we, we saved Hud. 
because Allah is the one who is the protector as mentioned earlier in this uh, before this ayah and those who believed with him by our rahmah from us and we saved them from a very harsh punishment right and that was you know if you think history is just cause and effect and cause and effect and and Allah doesn't uh, impose His will upon history, right? Tilk aadun. That was aad. Look what happened to them. Jahadu bi ayati rabbihim. They did. They rejected, right? Jahadu bi ayati rabbihim. They did. They did rejection of the ayat of Allah. Wa asaw rasulahu. And they disobeyed the messenger that was sent to them. Wa tabaru amra kulla jabbar anid. And they followed every, you could say, every every command, every order, right? That was Jabbar and Anid. That was uh, like a, ty a stubborn tyrant. A stubborn tyrant. They were just stubborn and ty tyrannical. Even after seeing the clear signs, they wouldn't believe. So, what person doesn't want to believe in Allah? What person doesn't want to believe in the truth? What person doesn't want to uh, believe that in a prophet of Allah? And in the teachings of the prophets, only a person who has a very harsh heart. And they were, you know, followed in this world with with uh, the deprivation of Allah's mercy. And on the day of judgment, indeed, Ad are the people. Let it be known the Ad are the people that did, rejected. The Rabb, their caretaker, their sustainer, their nurturer. Allah Ba'da Li'ad Qawm Al-Hud Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah, let it be known, or let it be declared, Ba'da Li'ad So, uh, Ba'da Li'ad Away with Ad. Qawm Al-Hud, these were the people of Hud alayhi salatu wa salam. وَإِلَى ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا Now, Thamud was one of those people that came as a generation who replaced <coughs> Ad. <coughs> they replaced Ad, uh, um, the nation of Ad. وَإِلَى ثَمُودَ أَخَاهُمْ صَالِحًا And to Thamud came their brother Salih. Salih alayhi salatu wasalam, Salihah. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ, من إِلَهٍ غَيْرُهُ O oh, my people, worship Allah. You have no divine, no authority, no di no no God other than Him. Who ansha'akum in al-ard? He is the one who started you from the earth. He is the one who created you from the earth. You know, and was-ta'marakum uh, fiha fastaghfiruhu. And He is the one who istamara. He is the one who settled you there, built you there. Fiha. Uh, فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ So seek forgiveness from him. ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Then turn to him in repentance. إِنَّ رَبِّ قَرِيبٌ مُجِيبٌ Indeed, my Rabb is very near to answering you. He's very near and he is the Rabb who will answer you. He's not just sitting there not answering your prayers. No, he answers your prayers. قَالُوا يَا صَالِحُ They said, O Salih, قَدْ كُنْتَ فِينَا مَرْجُونًا قَبْلَ هَذَا before Salih والسلام, perhaps became a prophet or before he started to, to advise them towards the oneness of Allah and to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to not and not to reject the truth. Before that they said, قَالُوا يَا صَالِحُ قَدْ كُنْتَ فِينَا مَرْجُومًا قَبْلَ هَذَا They said, O oh, Salih, you know, we, 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 you were among us, right? We thought, we had great hopes in you. مَرْجُوءًا مَرْجُوءًا قَبْلَ هَذَا You were, man, of great hopes before this. Uh, and, uh, 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 at, 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 so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, sorry, my dyslexia again is uh, affecting me. Tanhana, are you stopping us? And, and, are you trying to stop us from worshipping what our fathers, our forefathers worshipped? And we are in doubt regarding what you're teaching us and what you're saying. We're in doubt about that anyway. Rabbi. 
وَمَنْ يَنْصُرُونِي مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنْ عَصَيْتُهُ So he said the same thing now as the previous prophets. يَا قَوْمِ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ كُنْتُ عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ Oh my people, you already saw I was عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ I was on بَيِّنَةٍ I was already on the clear teachings of moral clarity before. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to me with His Rahmah, with His Wahi. وَمِنْ رَبِّي وَآتَانِي مِنْهُ رَحْمَةٍ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me His mercy, meaning revelation. I was already a good person. You're already a witness to that. You've already said that you saw goodness in me. And now a revelation has come to me that hasn't come to you. فَمَنْ يَنْصُرُنِي مِنَ اللَّهِ إِنْ عَصَيْتُهُ Who will help me? Right? If I disobey Allah. Who will help me if I disobey Allah? مَنْ يَنْصُرُنِي Who will help me? مِنْ الله Against Allah. إِنْ عَصَيْتُهُ فَمَا تَزِيدُنِي غَيْرَ تَخْسِيرُ Okay? And then he says, in fact, if I listen to you, فَمَا تَزِيدُنِي غَيْرَ تَخْسِيرُ I would not increase except in loss if I was to listen to you. I have to follow the revelation that has come to me. And you know before that I was a good person. And, and, and now the revelation I have is only confirming that which is in accordance to human nature. You should accept that. يَا قَوْمِ هَذِهِ نَاقَةُ اللَّهِ So he said, look, O oh my people, they asked for a miracle. They were given a miracle. Of a, of a camel that came out of the mountains. Right? لَكُمْ آيَةٌ This uh, female camel, okay, is for you a sign. فَزَرُوهَا تَأْكُلْ فِي, في الْأَرْضِ And leave her, let her eat from the things of the earth. وَلَا تَمَسُّوهَا بِسُوءٍ And don't touch her with anything evil. فَيَأْخُذُكُمْ عَذَابٍ قَرِيبٍ Otherwise, a near punishment will come and take you. This was a, she, a female camel. It used to drink up a lot of the water and uh, it used to take a lot of resources. So one day was for her, one day was for the people. All the people would consume equal to her. One day would be just for her, the next day would be for the people according to one of the narrations. And so this is what got to the elite and they weren't happy with this. فَعَقَرُوهَا So they killed her. Okay. So he فَقَالَ تَمَتَّعُوا فِي دَارِكُمْ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامِ Now the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تَمَتَّعُوا Just enjoy yourself in your houses ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامِ Three days. ذَلِكَ وَعْدٌ غَيْرَ مَكْزُوبٌ This is a promise of Allah that is not going to change. This is not going to be, there's, gonna, there's no lying about this. This is going to happen. فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ أَمْرُنَا نَجَّيْنَا صَالِحًا وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنَّا so this theme you see over and over again coming. فَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا When our command came, نَجَّيْنَا صَالِحًا We gave, we saved صَالِحْ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ And those that were with him. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنَّا As a mercy from us. مِنْ خِزْيِ الْيَوْمَ إِذِنْ From the humiliation of the, that day. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَهُوَ الْقَوِيُّ الْعَزِيزِ Indeed your Rabb is Al-Qawi, most strong, most powerful. وَأَخَذَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا سَيْحَقَتُوا فَأَصْبَحُوا فِي دَارِهِمْ جَاثِمِينَ And those people that had done wrong. وَأَخَذَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا سَيْحَتُوا Those people that had done wrong, they were overtaken by a loud shout. فَأَصْبَحُوا فِي دَارِهِمْ جَاثِمِينَ And they were, uh, they were in their houses in prostration. Loud, loud sounds is one of... A, actually one of the uh, forms of, of, of punishment and, and it, when there is loud sound you can't hear yourself and like let's say if you're you know one of the new um, ways of torturing people is to put them around a lot of sound because you lose yourself you can't even hear yourself think and 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 so just uh, you know Allahu A'lam right but Allah said فَاسْبَحُوفِي السَّيْحَةُ a loud sound a shout a shrieking noise took over them. فَأَصْبَهُوا فِي دَارِهِمْ جَاثِمِينَ They became helpless and they fell dead prostrate in their houses. كَأَنْ لَمْ يَغْنَوْنَ فِيهَا As if they had never been there. أَلَا إِنَّ ثَمُودَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ And then know it well that the people of Thamud all did kufr of their Rabb. They denied their Rabb, right? أَلَا بُعْ أَلَا بُعْدَ لِلْثَمُودِ and also away with the people of Thamud now. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلَنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَى قَالُوا سَلَامًا And remember when they came, the angels, they came to Ibrahim والسلام, to give him the good news. They were passing by to give Ibrahim good news but, and then followed by 
a bad news for the people of Lut alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is the good news followed by the bad news. The good news, news is that, uh, you know, the angels have come give good news to Ali, uh, Nuh alayhi, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam for what? For his second son Ishaq. وَلَقَدْ جَاءَ رُسُلَنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ بُشْرَى قَالُوا سَلَامًا So they said سَلَامًا قَالُوا قَالَ سَلَامٌ Now if you notice here for the people that are interested in Arabic language سَلَامًا versus سَلَامٌ They said سَلَام and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam said سَلَامٌ سَلَامٌ is a more complete سَلَام So whatever they said maybe السَلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ Then Ibrahim for example said السَلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ So he said a more complete سَلَام فَمَا لَب ف فما لبث أن أن جاء بإجل حنيذ. you know إبراهيم عليه الصلاة والسلام had a سنة that is that he would share food and he would use this as a way of doing دعوة. so what happened is he said you know he said he said to whoever was there with him right he فما لبث أن جاء بإجل don't you know don't waste time فما لبث أن جاء بإجل he didn't waste time he he quickly uh, brought a, a a cow that was roasted, okay? And it's interesting he brought a cow because, you know, a lot of these cultures in this area, they were worshipping cows, right? So to bring a cow that's roasted is kind of like teaching them tawheed and to show them this is just a co this is not something that's to be worshipped. Allahu A'lam. فَلَمَّا رَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمْ لَا تَصِلُ إِلَيْهِ نَكِرَهُمْ now, Ibrahim alayhi salatu is there, he brings them the food, and he sees their hands are not uh, extending forward to eat anything. Now, if you don't eat anything, that might be a sign of, you know, they're, they're not interested in having peace with you. Because in those days, you know, nowadays, you can eat someone's food and kill them. But in those days, you know, it, it was unthinkable to, like, eat someone's food and then also kill them. How could you do this, right? This was unthinkable. Um... فَلَمَّا رَأَى أَيْدِيَهُمْ And when he saw that their hands, لَا تَصِلُ إِلَيْهِ That their hands weren't reaching for the food, right? This, uh, this, uh, نَكَرَهُمْ This, he felt, uh, نَكَرَ He felt like he couldn't trust or that he didn't uh, understand what was going on. وَأَوْجَسَ فِي مِنْهُمْ خِيفَ And then he felt from them, from in himself, in, inside, uh, from them, he felt a type of fear. Okay, khifa. قَالُوا لَا تَخَفْ They said to Ibrahim, maybe the angels can tell the feelings of human beings too. لَا تَخَفْ Don't fear. إِنَّا أُرْسِلْنَا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِ لُوتِ We have been sent to the people of Lut, Lut alayhi salatu wa salam. So, وَمْ رَأَتُهُ قَائِمًا um, so the wife of Ibrahim was there standing وَمْرَأَتُهُ قَائِمَ ضَاحِكَتْ And she, she laughed because of this statement that this, this news that's going to be given to her She's, you know uh, فَبَشَّرْنَاهَا بِإِسْحَاقِ So they gave, the angels gave her the good news of the uh, coming of Ishaq. وَمِنْ وَرَائِي إِسْحَاقِ يَعْقُوبِ And after Ishaq gave them the, also the good news that this son Ishaq will have a son Yaqub and, and then from there Bani Israel will start. Right? قَالَتْ يَا لَيْتَنِي أَلِدُ وَأَنَا أَجُوزٌ وَهَذَا بَالِي شَيْخَ She was, you know, astonished, shocked to hear this from the angels. قَالَتْ Ya waylatani. She said, you know, what is, uh, well, it literally means like destruction on me or woe on me. Alidu, will I give birth? Wa ana ajuzun, and I'm like so old, right? I, wa hada bali shaykha, and this husband of mine, he's an old man, in hada shayun ajib, this is something very strange. Now, the commentators of the Quran mentioned here that she was definitely moved by this. But Ibrahim والسلام, by this time in his life, he'd seen so many strange things, everything being put into the fire, and then what happened with Ismail والسلام, and, and you know, he'd been through so much that he didn't find the ab unnatural or supernatural things or natural things or any of the things in his life. He came to a point where he didn't find any of it surprising. So he wasn't he he wasn't so he didn't even say anything uh 
regarding the uh, coming of a child, he immediately starts talking about the um, the the punishment that will be sent to the people of Lut and trying to stop them from, you know, trying to see if anything can be delayed in that regard. So all min amrillah. They said the angel said, "Are you in 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 amazed uh, about the commandment of Allah?" Rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu alaykum ahlal bayt. Let there be the rahmah of Allah and the barakah of, of Allah upon you, O people of the house. Innahu huwa hamidun majid. He is praiseworthy and honorable. So ahlul bayt here is the family or of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, meaning him and his wives, the immediate family. فَلَمَّا ذَهَبَ Ibrahim رَأُوا وَجَاءَتْ بُشْرَى So now when they, فَلَمَّا ذَهَبَ عَنْ Ibrahim So when it, uh, رَأُوا uh, uh, When the fear left Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, وَجَاءَتْ جَاءَتْ هُلْ بُشْرَى And the good news came to him, he finally, it settled into him, oh, okay, these are angels that have, you know, it became, this all probably happened in a very fast pace. Then what happened, he started arguing with them. يُجَادِلُنَا فِي قَوْمِ لُوتِ And he started to argue with us, Allah says. Even though he was talking to the angels, but he started to argue with us, meaning it was, he was arguing about Allah's command of sending the angels to destroy the people of Lut. إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَلِيمٌ أَوَّاءٌ مُنِيبٌ Indeed, Allah then, you know, looking at this scene, right? Allah says about Ibrahim and demonstrates to us for, for, through Ibrahim, إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لَحَلِيمٌ Indeed, Ibrahim was very forbearing. وَأَوَّاهٌ Right? And he would be very uh, soft in his heart, grieving. مُنِيب The one who returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over and over again. Ya Ibrahim a'rid an hadha. The angel said, look, just don't argue about this. An a'rid, just turn away from this issue. Innaw qad jaa amru rabbik. The command of your Lord has already come. It's going to happen. We have to go and we have to, uh, they have disobeyed the messenger. They have denied the message completely. Now the punishment of Allah has to come. Innahum, uh, innahum atihim a'zabun ghayra mardood. Indeed, will come to them a punishment now that cannot be returned. It's not going to be returned. It has to come. فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُلَنَا لُوطًا سِيَ بِهِمْ وَضَاقَتْ بِهِمْ زَرْعًا قَالَ هَذَا يَوْمٌ عَصِيبٌ So now, now you know that Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, his people were the most morally corrupt people. So لَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُلَنَا لُوطًا See be him. He was distressed. Wadaqat be him, and he felt restricted. Like, how am I going to protect these people? These people are like, they're just you know, they have a sexual anarchy, and this sexual anarchy is uh, of the same uh, gender. They do it with the same gender. Be him, zaran. Okay. Waqala hada yomun asib. So he said, this is going to be a difficult day for me. This is basically going to be a difficult day for me. Wajat qalmu. And his people came to him. So they were so deep in lust, they came to him in a hurry. They, the city realized some men have come to the city and they have gone as a guest to Prophet Lut. They didn't know that they were angels. And in the, in the beginning, Lut himself didn't know that they were angels. So now they see this, the news, they come to him and they say, وَمِنْ قَبْلُ كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّيِّئَاتِ And they were doing evil things even before this. قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ هَؤُلَاءِ إِبَنَاتِ You know, Lut wants to protect his guests. Guests are important, uh, you know, uh, people. And uh, a, a, a trust from Allah that when a guest comes to you, he's staying with you, you're going to take care of him, his life, his property is in your hands. يَا قَوْمِ هَؤُلَاءِ إِبَنَاتِ Lut said, here, here are the women for you. They are more pure for you. Fattakullah, fear Allah. Wala tukhzuni fi dayfi. And don't humiliate me regarding my, uh, my guests. Alaysa lakum rajulun rashid. Is there not any one good man amongst you? Is there not one good man amongst you? Now over here I want to talk about homosexuality in some detail inshallah. Over here, um, I do want to show you the ugliness, the ugliness, the ugliness of this type of lifestyle. Okay, and 
what I'm going to show you is so ugly, but it is necessary for you to understand that Quran is the word of Allah and Allah knows what is best for us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how He's designed us, how He wants us to live. So let me start with the e easiest thing to understand, okay? Depression amongst gay people, the LGBT community, is skyrocketing, okay? Uh, why do so many gay and bisexual men die from suicide? It is about time. <coughs> in fact, I think a newspaper article in California came out with this point. It, it is time to accept now that they, something that they haven't done. You know how kind of like uh, it's taboo to talk about certain topics in politics, right? It's taboo to talk about what this, the injustice of the state of Israel. It's taboo. It's like a holy cow. You can't talk about it. In the same way, it is taboo to say that homosexuality and HIV and AIDS are interlinked. You cannot, they don't want you to say HIV and AIDS is a homosexuality disease, but in fact it is. The only exception to that is the syringes, the needles, okay? Otherwise, it is predominantly in the gay community that these diseases take place. And uh, so the other thing is, is homosexuality essentially genetic or biologically determined? It is very, very important to understand homosexuality is not genetic. There was a study of children that were twins from the same zygote, from the same parents, in the same environment. One became homosexual and the other didn't. And so I'm just going to read this. Um, is homosexuality essentially genetically or biologically determined? No. Attempts to determine that homosexuality is simply a matter of genes or biology has been unsuccessful. For example, among identical twins, if one twin identifies as gay, the other one, the other one in nine twin siblings will be also identified as gay. Although, some in the media have used various studies to attempt to support a simple genetic or biological theory. And it continues. Uh, I studied with this professor, uh, Robert Cohen. I took a class with him. Uh, there was a Muslim doctor in, uh, in, in anyway. So, um, so I took a class. I got, he even gave certificates and all of that about understanding what it means to be gay, how to make somebody that's gay to become straight, because we know this is a big problem in the Muslim community. But let me now show to you one part of the ugliness. This is so ugly that when I showed this to the president of one of the uh, universities, LGBT community, queer, LGBT, LGTB, queer community leaders, even when they read this, this article that's on my blog about homosexuality, even he cringed. Even he couldn't, even he had a hard time reading it because it was so disgusting, because it's so against human nature. But I have to say this so that you understand Allah's level of abhorrence of something like this, that why these people were punished. You know, you have to understand this. So, the disgusting act of fisting and anal sex amongst homosexuals. You see, the, the, the human body is not designed to have sex in that area because things come out from that area and there's a muscle that keeps things in that area. But when you start having sex in that area, not only is your private parts touching feces, which is poop, right? And it's just so disgusting to even discuss this. So you understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so not okay with this. So I'll just leave it at that. أعوذ بالله قال لقد ألمت ما علينا في بناتك من حق. They said you already know that we have we we have not we don't have any we don't claim any rights over your daughters. إنك تعلم ما نريد. You know fully well know what we want. You know it. قال لو أن لي بكم قوة أو أوي إلى ركن شديد. He said, only if I had against you some power today, أو أوي إلى ركن شديد, or you know I I would have some uh some refuge in some 
some rook, rookan, some pillar, some some fortified pillar where I could just hide my guests and, 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 and keep them away from you. But your lust is so vicious, so strong. Now they tell Lut look, we are angels from your Rabb, we've been sent from Allah. They will never reach you, <laughs> we're angels. So he says, so the angels, sorry, they say, So in part of the night, just go out. And don't look back. Any of them. And they will not come back. Okay? Except don't take your wife. Innahu, innahu, Musibuha ma asabahum. Innahu musibuha ma asabahum. Indeed, her difficulty will be what's their difficulty. What will come over them is going to also come over her. She will also be destroyed with them. In wa inna ma'idatahum subh. And their promised time, their the time where the punishment is going to come from us is in the morning. These angels are there. They look like beautiful men, you know, attractive men. And they're there for the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alaysa subhu bi qareeb is not morning now so ever near. Right? فَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا جَعَلْنَا عَالِيَتَهَا سَافِلَهَا And when our command came, we just, you know, we made what was on top into the bottom. It was in the bottom onto the top. We turned everything around and just smashed it down. And then we set down a rain of stones min sijilin mandud, right? Uh, sijil, hard, hard clay that was layered after, that had layers. And this is, you know, the area of the Black Sea, and we know Black Sea has no life even till today. Musawwamatan in the Rabbik, they were marked by your Rabb. وَمَا هِيَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ بَعِيدٍ And Allah's punishment is not far away from the people that do injustice. As a general rule, people that do injustice, they are given a rope, okay, go do what you're doing. But then when it comes, it comes down hard on them. وَإِلَى مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبَ And to Madian, their brother came Shu'ayb. Prophet Shu'ayb alayhi salatu wa sallam qala ya qawmi abudu allaha ma lakum min ilahin ghayri oh my people worship Allah you have no divine no authority other than Allah wala tansuru wala tanqusu sorry wala tanqusu mikyala wal mizan and don't be make short because this is another thing the moral corruption that we talked about of Prophet Lut alayhi salatu wa sallam just as much Allah dislikes as he dislikes shirk he dislikes that you have economic oppression. You 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 don't give the right weight and the right measurement. Don't give less measurement. Nor the weight. I have an opinion that is good or I wish good for you. And I fear for you the day that punishment will overtake you. You do these things that are not according to the rule of Allah then Allah will give you some time to rectify yourself, to make yourself corrected, right? But then after that, especially after the message has been made clear, a warner has come to you. So it is very, very important for the Muslims of India to do da'wah to, 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 to those that are hardest against Islam. So the hujjah is on them. And the Muslims that are in Palestine should do da'wah to the, to the Jews of Israel. And the Muslims that are in India should do da'wah to the Muslims in India. Because then the hujjah of Allah is there. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more than their, their time, uh, uh, their time, you could say when the hujjah is there, then the, then the right to take action is also there. Ya qawmi awfu mikyala wal mizan bil qist. Oh my people, complete the measurement and the weight in qist injustice. Wala tabkhasun nas. And don't take away the, you know, deprive the people. Ashya'ahum their things. وَلَا تَأْثَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ And don't commit uh, 
uh, abuse on the earth and don't cause corruption in the world. But uh, what remains after you do justice of measurement and weight? Baqiyatullahi khayru lakum in kuntum mu'mineen. It is better for you if, if you are truly believers. Wa ma'alaykum bi hafiz. I'm not a manager over you. I'm not the guardian over you. I'm not the one. I don't answer on behalf of you. You have to answer on behalf of yourself. Qalu ya shu'aybu. Now here's a very interesting ayah. Qalu ya shu'aybu asalatuka ta'muruka an أن نترك ما يعبد آباءنا وأن نفعل في أمرنا ما نش ما ما نشاء قالوا شعيب they said oh شعيب does your prayer the prayers that you do now the first part makes sense but the second part is interesting الصلاة كتأمرك أن نترك ما يعبد آباءنا oh شعيب does your prayer command you that we meaning those that don't believe in you we should leave our forf the worship of our forefathers, meaning the the, the way our ma yeah, what our forf our forefathers worship. Oh anaf al fi amwalina ma nishaw, and that we can't do with our wealth whatever we please. Meaning your salah is stopping us from committing economic injustice. Is this meaning? This is the point. Right, or that we can't do, but they're saying it in their way that we can't do with our wealth whatever we want. Inna ka anta, inna ka anta rashid. Indeed, you are forbearing and you are a person of rush. You have maturity of thought. Okay, so they're asking him. So Shaib also says the same thing. Do you not see that I was on the clear path? You have a good opinion of me over there. If you, the previous prophet, they said we had good hopes in you. We had so the same thing. You were, you know, they would have said this to the prophet sallallahu We had so much hopes in you. You know, you were doing so good, but then you came out with this. So, what do you think about the fact that I was on bayin? I was on clear evidence. I was following the things that were morally clear. I had a good, you have, you had a good opinion about me. Now you, you are turning uh, uh, averse to me. You're, uh, you know, you're turning against me. My Rabbi, from my Rabb, I, ha I was on the clear path from my Rabb before revelation came to me. وَرَزَقَنِي مِنْ رِزْقٍ حَسَنًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then He gave me risk, risk of wahi and risk in general. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, but over here it's most probably referring to the revelation and prophethood because everything from Allah is risk, right? وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أَخَالِفَكُمْ I don't want to oppose you. I have no benefit of doing that. عَلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ Right? I don't want to uh, oppose you. I don't want to oppose you regarding what I'm stopping you from. I don't want to make this a situation of, 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 of stress or difficulty for us. But this is what I have to do. إِنِّي أُرِيدُ إِلَّا أَصْلَحْ I don't have any intention except for making things right. مَسْتَطَعْتُ as much as I can. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And this is just by the tawfiq, the opportunity is given by Allah. Allah gives it to me. I take the opportunity and try to help and do the right thing. وَعَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ And I trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبُ And to Him I return. You can look at the beauty of the attitude of Shu'ib alayhi wa sallam. يَا قَوْمِ لَا يَجْرِمَنَّ الشِّقَاقَ أَنْ يُصِيبَكُمْ مِثْلُ مَا أَصَابَ قَوْمَ نُوهِمْ وَقَوْمَ حُودٍ وَقَوْمَ صَالِحٍ So now he is the next nation. So Shu'ib is saying, يَا قَوْمِ لَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شِقَاقِ Let not your, O oh my people, let not your, uh, uh, you could say, um, your dislike of me, right, cause you to go in the sin. You'll see بمثل ما, and then you will find yourself in the same situation. ما أصاب قوم نوح, what happened to the people of نوح, وقوم حود, and the people of Hud mentioned before in the surah, and قوم صالح. So every time there's a, a nation, the good people are saved, then th those people become a nation, and then a prophet comes to them, because they're going on the wrong way, a prophet comes to them, or a prophet comes to them out of his mercy, then again, some of them believe, and some of them believe. So like this, a process was taking place until the time of the Prophet ﷺ that the only people that were left were the people that had responded to the calls of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the world, right? And now the Prophet is there, the last Prophet 
calling them towards Iman. This is the last filtering, okay? So the filter from Nuh, then Hud, then Salih. وَمَا قَوْمِ لُوتِ مِنْكُمْ بَعِيدِ And look at the people of Lut, alayhi salatu wasalam. He's not, they're not far from you. You know what happened to them. وَاسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ Seek forgiveness from your Rabb and وَتُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ and, and repent to him. إِنَّ رَبِّي رَحِيمٌ وَدُودٌ Indeed, your Rabb is Rahim and Wadud. Most merciful, most loving. قَالُوا يَا شُعَيْبُ مَا نَفْقَتُ كَثِيرًا مِمَّا they said, oh Shu'ayb, we don't understand what you're saying. Every time this is what they say, we don't understand. And oh Shu'ayb, we see you as a weak man amongst us. Right? And if it wasn't for your family, we would have stoned you already. And you're not somebody we respect too much. He's, Shu'ib said, Oh my people, is my family more respected to you than Allah? Right? But if you put him behind your backs, وَاتَّخَذْتُمُوهُ If you put Allah behind your backs, إِنَّ رَبِّ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ مُحِيطٌ Indeed, my Rabb is completely encircling everything that you do. يَا قَوْمِ اِعْمَلُوا عَلَى مَكَانَتِكُمْ إِنِّي عَامِلٌ Oh, my people keep doing what you're doing and I'm also going to do what I'm going to do. فَسَوْفَ تَعْلَمُونَ مَنْ يَأْتِي عَذَابٌ يُخْزِيهِ وَمَنْ هُوَ كَذَّابٌ and then you'll see soon when the punishment comes, right? Adabu uh, yuxzihi, the punishment that's going to humiliate, humiliate, be humiliating. Waman huwa kazab, and we'll see who is the liar. War war taqibu inni maakum raqib. So you watch, and I'm also watching with you. What will be the uh, result? Lama jaa amruna najayna shu'ayban waladina maahu bi rahmatin minna. So what is the lesson here? Those that are believed, if they do the da'wah, they do the hujjah, they establish the hujjah on the people, Allah will save them. If you don't do the hujjah, if you don't do the hujjah, if you don't do the da'wah, you won't be saved. So if the punishment is going to come of Allah to people that are oppressing people, whether it is Modi or was Netanyahu, if they're oppressing the people and you didn't put hujjah upon them, didn't do da'wah to them, then when the punishment comes, it'll come to everyone. وَلَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُنَا نَجَّيْنَا شُعَيْبًا وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ And then when our command came, we saved Shu'ayb and those that were with him بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنَّا from rahmah from us as mercy of Allah وَأَخَذَتِ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا سَيْحَةُ And those people that did wrong, they were they were overtaken by a loud shout فَأَسْبَهُ فِي دَارِهِمْ جَاثِمِينَ And they were also found in their houses just in prostration, you know. كَأَلَّمْ يَغْنَوْنَ فِيهَا As if they had never been there. وَمَا وَأَلَا بُعْدَ لِمَدْيَنْ Then away with the people of Madian. كَمَا بُعْدَ الثَّمُودِ Just like they put away with the people of Thamud. You know, Allah is watching, but Allah is not, not, Allah is capable of taking action, and He's watching, but He only gives you a certain time. But Allah, Allah does what He does out of mercy. Maybe the believers are not giving da'wah. That's why Allah's punishment hasn't come yet, because if it comes, it'll come on the believers too. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا مُوسَىٰ بِآيَاتِنَا وَسُلْطَانٍ مُبِينٍ And indeed we sent Musa alayhi salatu wasalam with our signs وَسُلْطَانٍ مُبِينٍ And clear evidence. إِنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَائِهِ مَلَائِهِ إِنَّ إِلَىٰ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَائِهِ Sorry. And he was sent to Musa alayhi salatu wasalam was sent to Fir'aun and his the establishment that they had فَاتَّبَعُوا أَمْرَ فِرْعَوْنَ And they followed the command of Fir'aun وَمَا أَمْرُ فِرْعَوْنَ بِرَشِيدٍ And the command of Fir'aun was not on the guidance. يُقَدِّمُ قَوْمَهُ يَوْمَ يَقْدُمُ قَوْمُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَوْرَاءَهُمُ النَّارِ And he will proceed, you know, he will proceed, his, the, the, his people, you know, the people will be brought, that are going to the hellfire, the whole group will just fall into the hellfire, brought into the hellfire, فَوْرَاءَهُمُ النَّارِ وَبِعْصَ الْغِرْدِ الْمَرْدُودِ And how wretched is a place 
to which they will be led on the day of judgment, they'll be just led into the hellfire. Yakdumu, they they will be made to advance. Qomuhu yom al qiyama, on the day of judgment. Fa'au fa'au rada nar, and then they will be led into the fire. Bi'sal wildu, how evil it is where they went, they were going. Wal mardud and their destination. وَاتَّبَعُوا فِي هَذِهِ لَعْنَةً وَيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةً And they were followed with Allah's mercy was taken away in this world and in the hereafter. بِعْسَ رِفْدُ الْمَرْفُودِ How evil is the gift that they will be given. ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْقُرَى نُقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ So here are many many lessons. You know, عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكَ We are in clear evidence. Before we even became prophets, they had good character before they became prophets. Number one. Number two, how Allah sends a prophet to a nation. If they deny him, the believers are saved. And then if the hujjah is done, then the believers are saved. Okay? And then, uh, you. so there are many lessons, inshallah. This will, ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْقُرَىٰ نُقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ And then also the issue of how does the prophet have this, how is the prophet getting, he's just inventing this? Or these are things that can be verified now through science and history and the previous books and so on and so forth. ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الْقُرَىٰ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ This is the news of the cities that we re relate to you. مِنْهَا قَائِمٌ وَحَصِيدٌ And some are st standing, right? Uh, some of those uh, cities are still standing for you. You can still see the pyramids. وَحَصِيد Hasid literally means harvest. But the point is that you could see the uh, remnants that you could take away. You could take the harvest uh, from their uh, cities. You could take uh, archaeology goes and takes their pottery and this and that. وَمِنْهَا قَائِمٌ وَحَصِيدٌ And you can, there are some that are still standing and you can take from them and create museums, right? But these museums, they don't teach you the lessons, that the lessons that the Qur'an wants to teach you. وَمَا ظَلَمُونَا وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا أَنفُ وَلَكِنْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ They didn't wrong us, but they wronged themselves. فَمَا أَغْنَتْهُمْ أَنْهُمْ آلِهَتُهُمْ مُلَّتِ يَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فَمَا أَغْنَتْ عَنْهُمْ آلِهَتُهُمْ الَّتِي يَدْعُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ And they weren't benefited. They did got no. They weren't enriched. They weren't benefited, right, uh, from the gods that they used to call other than Allah. So as you leave Allah more and more the more society becomes corrupt. And then as you take idols, you're really on the path of shaitan. Right? مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ مِن شَيْءٍ لَمَّا جَاءَ أَمْرُ رَبِّكَ When the command of your Rabb comes, وَمَا زَادَهُمْ غَيْرَ تَتْبِيب And they did not increase them except in تَتْبِيب except in going into ruin. Okay? Except whenever they went away from Allah to these idols, then, you know, then society also gets corrupted. And today is the worst situation that you're not even taking an idol for worship. You're saying there is no God. There is no divine. And you made man the center of everything. So you could see the moral corruption, the political corruption, the economic corruption. All of this has been combined into one. Just if the hujjah is put there, then things would proceed uh, in the direction that they're supposed to go in. وَكَذَلِكَ أَخَذُ رَبِّكَ إِذَنْ أَخَذَ الْقُرَى وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةً And so this is why, كَذَلِكَ, this is the reason why. أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ When your Rabb took, إِذَا أَخَذَ الْقُرَى When he took a city, right? When he seized the city, وَهِيَ ظَالِمَةً It was doing wrong. إِنَّ أَخَذَ أخذه, indeed, the taking of your Rabb. When Allah grabs a city, takes hold of a city, alimun shadid is very painful and very severe. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِمَنْ خَافَ الْعَذَابَ الْآخِرَةِ Indeed, and these are signs for the person who fears the punishment of the hereafter. ذَلِكَ يَوْمٌ مَجْمُوعٌ This is the day where they will be gathered. لَهُ النَّاسِ The people. وَذَلِكَ يَوْمُ مَشْحُودٌ And that will be a day that will be witnessed, meaning the Day of Judgment. وَمَا نُوَخِرْهُ إِلَّا لِأَجَلٍ مَعْدُودٌ And we do not delay it, these punishments, whether in this life or the next, uh, you know, things are not given a certain time. إِلَّا لِأَجَلٍ مَعْدُودٌ Except that they have a term that's appointed at a certain time. مَعْدُودٌ Just a limited term. 
you have limited number of days here in this dunya and when the prophet comes and you don't accept this call after he's made everything very clear and he's put the hujjah upon you then you also have a limited time that day that will come in which no one no one will talk except by his permission and amongst them there will be some that are uh, shaqi, they are unfortunate, they're going to go to the hellfire, or Sa'id, and some people very helpful, uh, very happy, they will be going into Jannah. And as for the people that are shaqiq, those people that are unfortunate, they will be in the fire. And therein, will be, they will be zafirun wa shahiqun. There will be loud noises of inhaling and exhaling. Something like this will be happening on, on that day. But this exhaling, inhaling is actually a sign of that there will be shouting and pain. <coughs> you know, when, you're, when somebody hurts you, you know, this, you know, this, this exhaling and inhaling that you'll be doing because of the pain that will be inflicted upon you. So this is a part of that. They will remain in it as long as the heavens and the earth remain, uh, remains, as long as the heavens and the earth remains. Either this can be literal or metaphorical. Except, except for whatever Allah wills. Indeed, your Rabb does whatever He pleases. The, this universe is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not about me and you. It's not, it's not, we are not we are, you could say, the witnesses, we are the spectators of what Allah does. That the story is not about us. Where, you know, this, this, this whole story, the center of it is Allah and what He wants and what He does and what He wills. Okay? And over here, I wanted to make clear, I don't know if I made it clear um, in this ayah. يَقْدُمُ قَوْمُهُ Fir'aun will be put in front of his people to, and made to walk, uh, as I was talking about that. So, uh, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ شِقَوْ فِي نَارِ لَهُمْ فِيهَا زَفِيرٌ وَشَحِيقٌ خالدين فيها ما دامت السماوات والأرض إلا ما شاء ربك إن ربك فعال لما يريد وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ سُعِدُوا فَفِي سُعِدُوا فَفِي فِي الْجَنَّةِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا مَا دَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ رَبُّكَ And as for the people that were Sa'id, that will be happy, that will be, they will be in Jannah as long as Allah wills, مَا دَامَتِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ As long as the heavens and the earth remains. Uh, over here, some scholars have asked a question that wh how long will that remain? Will it really be forever or is there an appointed time? Allah knows best. Except for whatever Allah wills. And it will be a giving that will be absolutely uninterrupted. So do not be in doubt, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as to what these people are worshiping. That what is going to happen with these people, have no doubt. When the, but the punishment will come, and have no doubt that the punishment will come. فلا فلا تك في مريتين. O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, don't be in any doubt. مما يعبد هؤلاء ما يعبدون إلا ما إلا كما يعبد آباءهم من قبل. They don't worship except for the people before them were worshiping. وإن وإن لا لا مؤلفهم نصيبهم غير منقوص. And we will definitely give them موفيهم نصيبهم their portion غير منقوص without any diminishing. We'll give them what they deserve without diminishing it. Okay, whether in this life or the next life. لقد أتينا موسى الكتاب فاختل فاختلف فيه. And we gave indeed موسى عليه الصلاة والسلام the book, but they differed about it. وَلَوْلَا كَلِمَةٌ سَبَقَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ لَقُدِيَ بَيْنَهُمْ Had it not been a word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it would have already been decided. The word meaning an appointed time. Had it not been an appointed time, it would have already been decided. Right? إِنَّهُمْ لَفِي شَكِّ مِنْهُمْ مُرِيبٌ And they are in doubts about this, uh, the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنْ كُلُّ لَمَّا يُوَفِّي نَهُمْ رَبُّكَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ 
each time when uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the reward or the uh, what they deserve, the compensation of their deeds. Innahu bima ya'maluna khabir. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is fully aware of whatever you do. Bima ya'maluna khabir. He is aware of whatever and he has the news and the information of whatever you do. Fastakum kama umirta and and stay steadfast just as you've been commanded. And man taaba man taaba and and those people man taaba ka wala tat in so prophet stay steadfast those people who have done tawba to Allah turn to Allah with you O prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam la tat don't uh, don't uh, don't be um don't transgress them Innahu bima ta'amaluna basir. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full insight into what you do. Wala tarkanu ila ladina dhalamu. So don't incline, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ila ladina dhalamu, to the people that do wrong. Right? Fatamassakum unnar. If you do that, you'll be touched by fire. Wa ma lakum min duni lahi min duni lahi min awliya, thumma la tunsaroon. And there, then you will find no helper, no protector other than Allah, and you will not be helped. وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفِ النَّحَارِ And establish the prayer in the two ends of the day. طَرَفَ النَّحَارِ In the two parts of the day. Meaning uh, Dhuhr and Asr. وَزُلْفَ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ And uh, at the coming of the night, meaning Maghrib. وَإِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Indeed, good deeds, they do away with the evil deeds. Whenever in life you do a bad deed, then definitely if you know you've done something bad, maybe you shouted out someone unintentionally or intentionally, you were, you were unjust to some Whatever evil you've done, follow it by something good. ذَلِكَ أَذْكَى لِلذَّاكِرِينَ This is a reminder for those who are willing to take reminding. وَاسْبِرْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And be have patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't waste the good deeds of the people that do good. فَلَوْ لَا كَانَ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ أُلِي بَقِيَّةٍ يَنْحَوْنَ عَنِ الْفَسَادِ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِنْ أَنْجَيْنَا مِنْهُمْ And then a very interesting question is being asked here. فَلَوْ لَا كَانَ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ why wasn't it that from these generations that passed from the past people that have been now destroyed, these people from the past, min qabul, uli baqiyatin, right? Those people that were uh, possessing the, the things of the uh, the, the world, yanhawna anil fasad. Why were they not stopping people from doing fasad on the earth? Illa qalila mimman anjayna minhum, except for the few that we saved at the end, right? But the punishment, why were they, why were they not stopping people? Because you consider your forefathers and what the forefathers do, well, they, they're your forefathers are the ones, many of them who were, uh, your forefathers, 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 forefathers were the ones that were destroyed. And they followed the people, right, that did dhulm, right? وَمَا أُطْرِفُوا فِيهِ Because of the luxuries that they were given. وَكَانُوا مُجْرِمِينَ And they were criminals. وَكَانَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُحْلِكَ الْقُرَى It is not for Allah to destroy any city. Allah would not destroy بِظُلْمٍ Out of wrong. وَأَهْلُهَا مُسْلِهُونَ And why would people are doing good? No, Allah doesn't do that. But if Allah wanted, Allah would have made the whole world one. But they will never stop being in differences. Except for the ones that Allah has mercy upon. Allah says, and this is why we created them. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ and and then the the command of Allah will be completed. La amla anna jahannama min al jinnati wal insi ajma'in. I will fill the hellfire with jinn and ins, all of them, those of them that obeyed the shaitan. Wa kul wa kulun alayka min anba'i rusul ma nuthabit bihi 
ما ما نثبت به فؤادك. And each of these stories, events that have been related to you, O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, min anba'i rusul of the anba'i rusul. Why do we do this? That we make firm your heart. ما نثبت به فؤادك. So we will make firm your heart. وجاء من وجاءك في هذه الحق والموعظة. And that. The truth has come to you, and a warning has come to you. Wa dhikra lil mu'mineen, and a reminder for the believers of the reality of this life and what really has to be done. Wa qul lil ladina la yu'minun la yu'minun yamalu ala makanatikum inni amilun wa ana amilun. And uh, say to those who disbelieve. Now you say it, just as the previous prophet said this. Do what you can do against me. Wa ana amilun, and I'm doing what I have to do also. Fantaziru inni inna muntazirun. You you don't believe the punishment's coming to you in Mecca, but I also just wait and just see if the punishment comes or not. And like I said, just for clarification, that uh, you know the punishment came in the form of Badr, and then after that, Fathul Mecca. By the hands of the believers, as Allah mentioned in the previous surahs, وَلِلَّهِ غَيْبُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأَمُورِ كُلُّهُ For Allah is the unseen of the heavens and the earth. وَإِلَيْهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأَمْرُ كُلُّهُ And for Him is the affair, all of it. فَعْبُدْهُ وَتَوَكَّلْ إِلَيْهِ Worship Allah, be loyal to Allah, serve Allah, and trust in Allah. Really trust in Allah, because He does take action. He does save the believers. He does answer the prayers. وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِغَافِلٍ أَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah is not unaware of the things that you do. So over here, inshallah, we see that, um, so this is uh, Surah Al-Hud. Allah talked about Nuh, then Hud, then Salih, then Lut, then Shu'ayb, then Musa, and then, you know, the ending. And now we're going to, inshallah, study Surah Al-Yusuf. The the things that Sufr, uh, Prophet Yusuf suffered, how he was tempted, his years in the prison, the rise of Yusuf, and some lessons of history. But we're going to actually end here. His, his prison years is where we're going to end in this juz. Inshallah. Tabarak wa ta'ala. So we start with Yusuf now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Most of you people already know this story. So inshallah we'll be able to do this relatively quickly inshallah. بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را These are حروف المقطعات No one knows what they really mean تلك آيات الكتاب المبين These are the آيات The signs of a clear book okay. إن أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا We have sent this Quran in Arabic From له المحفوظ له The information of له المحفوظ was taken and then made into Quran and Arabian, made into Quran that is Arabic, into the heart of the Prophet sallallahu So you may comprehend it, so you may understand it, and one can talk about the many, many, many benefits of the Arabic language. Uh, one of which is that if there was any language that a computer could understand, it would be the Arabic language because everything follows a rule. It's not like in English where knife could be N-I-F-E and then K-N-F-I-E and like this. It doesn't have it, everything in Arabic language is very, very mathematical. It's a very mathematical language, right? So uh, people that want to apply their understanding, if they learn the Arabic language, the Arabic language also has a lot of wisdom in it. For example, just as an example, the word ilm, which is, Ilm ain la mim, and then ilm, and then if you turn it around, it becomes amal. So amal means to do action. So ilm is attained to do amal, right? So there's a lot of wisdom like this in the Arabic language, even from the words and just looking at the words and 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 how words are interconnected with one another and so on and so forth, and the root words of things. Uh, uh, for example, um, let's say the relationship between shukr and shirk. Shukr is Sheen Kaf Ra, Shirk is Sheen Ra Kaf. So, and then there, so there are many things like this that the Arabic language has that other languages don't have that give you an insight into what is being expressed, what is being said. And another thing to consider is <coughs> this. Then, you know, from one word in Arabic, for example, Kataba, you have Maktub, you have Kitab. You have so many words, just, just uh, a more simple example would be the word ilm, okay? Ain, lamim. 
from ilm you have ma'loom, which is known. From ilm you have allama, somebody who is extremely knowledgeable. From ilm you have allam, which is a sign of something, an information of something, right? So you you have uh, you have from one word, ayn uh, means so many other words that are interrelated. So for example, knowledge and information and the teacher are like completely different words. Where in the Arabic language, these are all interrelated. Muallam is the teacher who teaches ilm. Muallam yuallimu. So the muallam he teaches, right? So the Arabic language is a lot more efficient and a lot more specific and a lot more, uh, you could say, uh, clear. Uh, and we have sent this Quran down in Arabic so you will understand it. And indeed we relate to you أحسن القصص, the most, uh, the most beautiful events. The most beautiful of events. بما أوحينا of what we send to you. إليك هذا القرآن to you this book. إن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين. Indeed, before this you were amongst the people that were uh, غافل that were didn't you didn't know these events. O Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Over here, I want to say له المحفوظ. And from له المحفوظ, the Quran goes to each prophet in his language. So له المحفوظ has whatever it has, but then from there it is transferred into the language of the, prophet, of the Prophet of that time. So whether he's speaking Aramaic or Hebrew or so on and so forth. And remember when Yusuf said to his father, Oh my father, indeed I have seen in a dream 11 stars and sun and moon all of them, رَأَيْتَهُمْ لِسَاجِدِينَ I saw them all, all, all bowing down to me. The ayah could have read, إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ أَشْرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرِ لِسَاجِدِينَ I would have, I see them bowing down. رَأَيْتَهُمْ لِسَاجِدِينَ He is emphasizing that he was relating this story over and over again. قَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ لَا تَقْسُسْ رُعْيَكَ عَلَىٰ إِخْوَتِكَ فَيَكِيدُونَ كَكَيْدَ So, uh, Ya'qub gives advice to his son, Ya Bunaya, my dear son, la has, uh, this ru'ya. don't tell this dream ala ikhwatika. Don't tell your brothers about this dream. they'll plot against you. In the shaytana lil insani mubin. Indeed, man is an open enemy. Shaytan is an open enemy to human beings. Okay? They're according to some of the riwayat that, uh, you know, number one, even though he was an old man, but he had such a good relationship with his son that his son came to him to tell him his dream. But on the other hand, Yaqub was such a good father that he was, you know, most parents nowadays, a lot of parents, if not most, they they really are out of touch with their kids. And here is a, pro, a, pro, a prophet and a father who is in touch with his kids. He knows their sentiments, their feelings, and uh, their likes, their dislikes. And so he understands that such a dream coming from Yusuf could be a source of problem between him and the brothers. So he tells them don't. And then the best way to handle it is instead of blaming the brothers, don't blame the brothers, but blame the shaitan, right? Because shaitan will try to take care of, try to take advantage of this situation. And this is how your Rabb, Allah chose you and this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught you how to interpret the events. The ahadith could be discourse statements. The ta'wil al ahadith can be, for example, interpretation of Quran. Ta'wil al ahadith can also be interpretation of dreams. Ta'wil al ahadith can also be the interpretation of events. So, if you can interpret the events, you can see the coming events, the seeing events as they're happening, and then the dreams help you do that also. They help you telling tell you the coming events. And then, if you have the ayat of Quran, you have ta'wil al-ahadith. How do you come to the final conclusion regarding the statements that are being said? وَيَتِمُّ نِعْمَتُهُ عَلَيْكَ And to complete his ni'mah upon you. وَعَلَىٰ آلِ يَعْقُوبِ And to the, uh, to the family of Ya'qub. كَمَا أَنْ عَمَا كَمَا أَنْ أَتْمَمْتَهَا عَلَىٰ أَبْوَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ إِبْرَاهِيمُ وَإِسْحَاقِ The way it was completed for your fathers before Ibrahim and Ishaq. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ Indeed, your Rabb is all-knowing, all-wise. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي يُوسُفَ وَإِخْوَتِي آيَاتٌ لِلسَّائِلِينَ 
Indeed, in Yusuf, in the story of Yusuf, the events of Yusuf and his brothers, what transpired be between them in the story of Yusuf, there are signs for people who ask questions. A lot of things cannot be understood uh, except through metaphors and stories and narrations because of the way human beings are. And so a lot of the philosophical questions, and you know, a lot of philosophy is put in the form of kind of like a dialogue of events between two people who are talking. And so this is, you could say, also a philosophical disposition, a philosophical discourse that's being taken place. A lot of things can be understood. For example, Qadr. That on the on the one side the brothers did everything that they could to kill Yusuf, but on the other hand Allah did what He wanted. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is not forcing. Allah gives free will on the one side. So there's a philosophical question: How can free will and the qadr of Allah how can they coexist? Well, they exist. They coexist the way they did in the story of Yusuf Indeed, in the story of Yusuf and his brothers, there are there are signs for people who ask questions. There are many philosophical questions that are answered in the surah, and there is other even other questions that people would ask. you know, The Prophet said, "Good question is half the knowledge." So a, a lot of the questions, a lot of the philosophical questions, are answered here uh, in this surah. إِذْ قَالَ إِذْ قَالُوا لَيُوسُفُ وَأَخُوهُ أَحَبُّ إِذْ قَالُوا When the brothers, they said, لَيُوسُفُ وَأَخُوهُ أَحَبُّ And Yusuf and his brother, أَحَبُّ إِلَىٰ أَبِينَا مِنَّا Our father loves, seems to love Yusuf and his brother more than he loves us. وَنَحْنُ عُصْبَ Even though we are, you know, uh, we are a usba, we are a tribe, we are powerful, right? Uh, our father has gone astray. He's clearly on the wrong path. You know, he's putting his attention, his devotion, you could say his 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 extra time, you could say his affection in the wrong place. So they said, they decided, why don't we kill Yusuf? or leave him out ardan in the earth and then what will happen your father's face will become free for you his attention he'll give it to you and after that you become a righteous people Yusuf this was apparently according to the riwayat his older brother he said uh, one of them said, don't kill him. لا تقتلوا يوسف وألقوه في غيابة الجب But instead throw him into the end of the, uh, into the, into the well. يختلطه بعض السيارة Then, you know, some travelers will come and they will pick him up. إن كنتم فائلين If you're going to do anything, then this is what you should do. Don't kill him, just throw him in the uh, well. قالوا يا أبانا ما لك لا تأمن على يوسف وإن وإن له لناسهون. So now they've you know made a plan and they go to their father and they say يا أبانا or our father ما لنا لا تأمننا على يوسف. Why don't you trust us with Yusuf? وإن له لناسهون and we are very sincere to him. You know أرسل هو معنا غدا. Send him with us tomorrow. يط يرطع. Then you know let him like you know amuse himself, enjoy himself. ويلعب وإن له الحافزون and we're going to be his protectors let him enjoy and play and we are uh, very protecting over him maybe uh, the father was giving him attention teaching him you know having you could say classes for him giving him extra making teaching him things maybe this so they said why don't you you know he's always busy studying with you or with you has your attention let him come and play with us let him enjoy for a day just for one day just let him come tomorrow قال إني لا يحزنني أن تذهبوا به. so يعقوب عليه الصلاة والسلام said it saddens me that I should send him with you. وأخاف أن يأكله الزعب. and I fear that some wolf will eat him. this was also according to some riwayat he had some dream about a wolf. إن كنتم أنهم غافلين and غافلون you will be about you will you know you will be doing your own thing you will be busy in your own thing and a wolf will maybe come and eat him. Or this was perhaps some excuse uh, Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam was using as a hypothetical that maybe this could happen. So you would be heedless of it and then, you know, it wouldn't be safe for him. قَالُوا لَإِنْ أَكَلَهُ ذِعْبُ And if uh, they said in response to their father, لَإِنْ أَكَلَهُ ذِعْبُ if, his, if, 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 uh, if a wolf was to come and eat him, for real, وَنَحْنُ أُسْبَ And we are like a, a clan, we like a tribe, we're so many. In, 
uh, then we're definitely uh, of the losers. So when they took him, and they uh, they put him into uh, so they all you know uh, went together and put him into the bottom of the well and we revealed we gave revelation to Yusuf والسلام, that you will one day tell them of this event that this putting you putting you in the well and they will at that time they will not, not recognize you so Yusuf والسلام, was you know given this assurance even when he was in the well this is a very interesting ayah from a psychological point of view because when people lie they overly cry or when they are when they're fake crying they overly cry or when they are uh, pro they're crying as a protest if a, a real crying lasts you know a minute 30 seconds to a minute this is why one of the psychologists wrote if your kid cries over a minute or two then go ahead and you know hit him in the back uh, in his butt one more time because that crying is a protest. And oh, oh, our father, we went and we were, you know, we were racing each other. And we left Yusuf with our things. And just as you said, a wolf came and ate him. And maybe there's a reason wolf, they used even a wolf as an example. Maybe there was a lot of wolves at that time where wolves were known to have eaten humans. Allahu alam. But I point this out only that maybe research can be done in these fields. But you're not going to believe us if we are even truthful. You'll see this in the story of Yusuf over and over again, the role of the shirt. Okay, The shirt will play a role here, it plays a role when the woman runs after him, it plays a role with his father when he gives the shirt back to bring back his eyesight. So they came back with his shirt uh, with damin kadib, with a false blood. So what did his father say? Rather, your souls have enticed you to something. Your own selves have asked you to do something. So, so, so I'll ask. The same word. All I can do is have sabr. I don't have any proof. Allah is the one I seek help from. For that which you describe. وَجَاءَتْ سَيَارَةٌ فَأَرْسِلُوا فَأَرْسِلُوا وَارِدَهُمْ فَأَدْنَى دَلْوَى So some of the travelers, they came, right? And they sent, فَأَرْسِلُوا وَارِدَهُمْ They sent the person to, you know, send uh, the, the, the thing down to get the water, the bucket, you could say, right? دَلْوَى uh, so they bring it up and there's a boy in there. They say, oh, this is a boy. So they decided, you know, we will, they, uh, so, so they concealed him. Uh, and uh, like they concealed him like he was a merchandise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was fully aware of what they were doing. And they sold him for a saban and baghtan for a small price. Drahima ma'duda, just some few drahimas, a few drahima. Wa kanu, kanu fihi min min zahideen, and they were content with this little price for Yusuf. They didn't know who he was, what his future was, but they sold him for a small price. Wa qala ladish qala ladish tarahu min Misra li imraatihi ikrami mathwahu asa an yanfauna an natakhidu walada. You'll find this in Surah Al-Yusuf and also in Surah Al-Taha, I believe, about Yusuf and Musa, because these were Western prophets, prophets of the Western world. And one of the qualities, and you'll see in the surah many qualities, uh, I'll just point out a few, but many qualities of the West in this surah. Uh, and also, I want to mention, when Yusuf was the story how this, the family of Yusuf and how Bani Israel came into Egypt. Now they were in Egypt. Now they were, uh, the Hiskas tribe was there and their leader is called Malak, the king. Then it, uh, the Hiskas tribe is overtaken and a new 
a, a, a new dynasty takes over, and this is the dynasty of the Firauns, the Qiptis, they had a nationalistic movement, the, the, the Coptics took over, and their leader was Firaun, their, the title of the leader was called Firaun, okay? So, now, what is happening is, is that in the Western world, you know, immigration is a peculiarly, interestingly, uh, Western phenomenon, so they use these words, for Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and also Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Yusuf is how they got in and 2000 years later I believe uh, is how they got out with uh, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. قَالَ الَّذِي قَالَ الَّذِي قَالَ الَّذِي اشْتَرَاهُ مِنْ مِصْرَ said the one who purchased him in, in the city لِإِمْرَأَتِهِ to his wife he said إِكْرَمِي مَثْوَاهُ right uh, show him respect and, and give him a, a place to rest Okay, and asa ayyan fauna, maybe he will uh, benefit uh, benefit us, walada, or we will take him as, as a son. You'll find these same words about Musa. This is how we gave, uh, we established Yusuf on earth. And this is, and we use this as a way, these events as a way to teach him ta'wilul ahadis. Right, and the final ta'wil, the father, the dream he had with his, uh, and that he told his dad, the ta'wil of that will be at the end, right, where he will sit with his. Uh, you will see. Wallahu ghalibun ala amrihi, walakin akthar nasi la yalamun. Allah is ghalib, is completely in control over the affairs. Walakin akthar nasi la yalamun, but most people don't know it. Allah is in control of all the affairs of the Muslims and of ourselves individually. لما بلغ أشده آتي آتيناه حكما وعلما. When he reached his his reached his maturity, which is uh, according to most scholars, including Jalaluddin uh, Jalalain, uh, uh, is forty years. وآتيناه حكما وعلما. And we gave him wisdom and we gave him knowledge. كذلك نجز المحسنين. This is how we reward the people that do good. وَرَابَدْ وَرَابَدَتْهُ أَلَّتِي هُوَ فِي بَيْتِهَا النَّفْسِ So she, in whose house he was, okay, uh, she wanted to seduce him. وَرَابَدَتْهُ أَلَّتِي فِي بَيْتِهَا النَّفْسِ وَغَلَّتِ الْأَبْوَابِ قَالَتْ هَيْتَ لَكْ She locked the door and she said, come over here. قَالَ مَعَاذَ اللَّهِ Every time you see seduction, say Ma'az Allah, just like Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. I seek refuge in Allah, I seek refuge in Allah. Inna Rabbi ahsana mathwai. Rabbi here can mean Allah, or Rabbi can mean the, the, the person who bought me, he's given me a place to be, and, and I've, you know, he's done so many good to me, and I don't want to, uh, to, to be disloyal to him in any way. Ma'az Allah. Inna Rabbi ahsana mathwai. He is my Rabb. He's my master. He's he's gave me given me a good place to stay, a good residence. Innahu la yuflihu zalimun. And indeed, Allah subhanahu wa taala does not give success for the people that do wrong. Lakad hamat bihi. So she was determined to get him. Wa hamma biha, and he, yani Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, he also would have been inclined towards her. Walau la raa burhana rabbi. If he had not seen a proof from his rabb. This can mean many things. According to one of the narrations, he saw the face of his father telling him, "Don't, don't you dare!" Allahu a'lam. كَذَلِكَ نُصَرِّفُ عَنْهُ سُوءَ وَالْفَحْشَاءِ This is how we we removed from him evil and fahsha and indecent things. إِنَّهُ مِنْ إِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ And this is because he was a sincere servant of ours. فَاسْتَبَقَ الْبَابِ So they both ran to the door. Now he's trying to run out. She's trying to catch him. قَمَتْ قَدَّمْ وَقَدَّتْ قَمِيسُهُ مِنْ دُبْرِ And she tore a piece of his shirt, his qamis, from the back. And as they're reaching the door, الْفَيَّا سَيِّدَهَا لَدَ الْبَابِ The master of the house, he's at the door. Now the wife is there, so she says, فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ مَنْ أَرَادَ بِأَهْلِكَ السُّوءُ What will be the reward of those people that wanted to do something evil to your wife? إِلَّا يُسْجَنَا Except that he should be put into the jail. أَوْ أَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Or some painful punishment should be given to them. قَالَ يُسُفْ said, هِيَا رَاوَدَتْنِي عَنْ نَفْسِي She is the one who is trying to seduce me. وَشَاهِدَ شَاهِدٌ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا And now, 
uh, a witness among uh, amongst the witness, one of the witnesses in the house of the house in she, she said in kanat qamizu qadda min qubrin fa sadaqat wa huwa min al kadhibin if his shirt is ripped from the front then she is telling the truth and he is the liar wa in kana qamizu qubda min dubr but if his shirt is torn from the back fa kazzabat then she is the liar wa huwa min as sadiqin and he is the one who is telling the truth falamma ra'a qamisa qubda min dubr so when it was seen that the shirt is ripped from the back Qala, so the, the, the master of the house, he said, إِنَّهُ مِنْ كَيْدِ كُنَّا This is definitely amongst your plotting and planning. إِنَّ كَيْدَ كُنَّا عَظِيمُ And your plotting and planning is great. These types of gossips are also part of the Western society more than any other society. Yusuf أَعْرِدْ أَنْ هَذَا Yusuf just, you know, just ignore this. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِي لِذَنْبِكِ And ask forgiveness for your sin. You know, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لِي لِذَنْبِكِ uh, And so, uh, maybe the husband said this to his wife, in, in naki kunti min al-khati'in. You are definitely, uh, amongst the people that have done wrong. Qala niswa. So now the women of the town, they hear this gossip. Fil Madina. Imratul Aziz. Uh, about the, uh, the wife of the wazir. The wife of the minister. Turawidu. Fataha, that she wanted to seduce a the young man. Now he's a servant of the house. It's not. It's you know they look down upon like this. You know she's of the higher caste and he is just a slave. And rawadatu fatahu an nafsi qad shagafaha hubba. And she has fallen in deep love. Uh, you know uh, there is a um you know this deep love that's not real love, right? Uh. So, uh, anyway, there's a lot about this in psychology that I won't go into this right now. But, uh, Indeed, we see her in being in the wrong way completely. She has got it all wrong. When she saw, heard of their scheming that they're gossiping against her or whatever they had, they were doing against her. And they, they, in this, maybe they had things against her before. Now they have a big story against her. And, you know, they're really using it for prop doing propaganda against her. Right? So, أَرْسَلَتْ إِلَيْهِنَّ وَعَتَدَتْ لَهُنَّ مُتَّكَأً So she said for them, she threw out like a party. And she prepared for them food. وَآتَتْ كُلَّ وَاحِدًا مِنْهُنْ سِكِّينَ So she, on purpose, part of her planning was that she gave all of them a, a knife. Okay? Again, knife is a tool that is specifically unique to the Western society. Now, you know, they're, she's there and all the women are there and they're wondering, who is he? Who is he? Who is he? Who is this man that, you know, that, that she's seducing? And then she, you know, they're looking at, and all these servants are around them because, you know, she's an important person. She doesn't have one servant. She has many servants. And then she calls for Yusuf, right? Oh, Yusuf, oh, come here, come here. Right? I need you to do this, whatever it is. Akbarna hunna. All of a sudden, they realized what a big thing he is. What a meaning he is. He is. Uh, he is. Uh, you know, they were greatly affected by him. Akbarna hunna. They were greatly affected by him. Waqatana bi hunna. And they cut their hands with the knife that she had given them. Maybe it was a, some special fruit or meal that required cutting at a, at a, at a you know something very delicate, and their hands got cut. Right? Aidiyahuna. Qulna hasha lillah. They said, by the perfection of Allah. ما هذا بشرا? He is not a human. He's so beautiful, right? In هذا إلا ملك كريم. This is some beautiful, beautiful angel. And you know, there's a lot of studies about Egyptian and Egyptian religion and so on and so forth. And it would be also worth doing research that uh, if the Hiskis people, not the Fir'aun, but the Hiskis people, if they did believe in angels. قالت فذلكن الذي تم لم تنني في. Then she said, when you know when they cut their hands, then she said, ah, you know, this is what you were blaming me for. لقد راودت راودته عن نفسي. Yes, I did try to seduce him for myself. فاستعصم. But he he what he saved himself. وإن لم يفعل ما أمره لا يسجننا. But if he doesn't do what I want, you know, in the end I'm giving him some time, I will jail him. 
ولا يكون ولا من الصاغرين. Or he, I will make him somebody like the lowest of the low. Now, when Yusuf heard this statement of hers to the other women, قال رب أسجن أحب إلي مما تدعونني إلي Yusuf والسلام, prayed to Allah, Allah, a, a sijin, a, a jail is more beloved to me than what she's calling me towards. This immorality that she's calling me to, I don't want that. إلا يصرف عني كيدهن والله, please pr protect me, divert from me this uh, plotting and planning that they have. أصيبوا إليهن Right? That uh, I would be inclined towards them. وَأَكُونُ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ And I must be amongst the people that are ignorant. فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ فَصَرَفَ عَنْهُ كَيْدَهُنَّ إِنَّهُ السَّمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to this dua of Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Some scholars have pointed out that if you know Yusuf had done another dua other than that they put him in jail because Allah heard his dua and he, he went to jail. Allahu a'lam. فَاسْتَجَابَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ فَصَرَفَ عَنَّهُنْ صَرَفَهُ عَنْهُ كَيْدَهُنَّ so Allah responded to his call and he prevented uh, their plan on him. How? He went to jail. Okay. Even today in America, you know, one of the places where that was being done very, very rapidly is the, is the prison system. إِنَّهُ هُوَ السَّمِيُّنَ عَلِيمٌ Indeed, he hears and knows all things and completely. ثُمَّ بَدَى لَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا رَآهُ آيَاتِ لَيَسْجَنَنَّهُ حَتَّى حين. This is an interesting ayah. So the men, they saw, you know, all these women uh, kind of like being um, attracted to Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. So they thought that it is in, in public safety, you can say, it's in the in the cause of public safety, that let him be in prison for a while, this is the best for us, right? ثُمَّ بَدَأْ لَهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ رَآهُ آيَاتِ After they saw the signs, right? After they had seen the signs, uh, then لَيَسْجُنَنَّهُ uh, حَتَّى that, that we should just put him in prison for some time. وَدَخَلَ مَعَهُ سِجْنِي فَتَيَانِ And in his jail, wherever he was, there were two other youth there. قَالَ أَحَدَهُمَا إِنِّي أَرَى أَعْصِرُ خَمْرًا I saw in my dream that, you know, I am, a, I see myself in a dream and I am giving, you know, juice. أَعْصِرُ خَمْرًا I'm like uh, giving juice. قَالَ uh, أَخِرُ And the other one said, إِنِّي أَرَانِي أَحْمِلُ فَوْقَ رَأْسِ خُبْزًا and I uh, saw on, uh, I saw that فوق رأسي خبز تأكله طير. I saw bread and a bird coming to top of my head and eating from it. نبعنا بتأويله إن لنا راك من المحسنين. We see something special in you. Do you you know you tell us what these this dream means? Okay, so these two dreams. قال لا يأتيكما تعام ترزقاني به ترزقاني he said, Yusuf والسلام, said, and this was his da'wah method. Look, I'll tell you what you want, which is the interpretation of the, this dream. But first, listen to what I have to tell you. And he uses this time to do da'wah to the people in the prison. لا يأتيكم تعام ترزقاني به You will not get your food that is provided to you, except إلا أن نبعتكما Except I will tell you both بتعوي, the, the interpretation of this dream. قبل أن يأتيكما before it comes to you before the food comes to you ذلك مما علمني ربي this is because of what uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala my Rabb has taught me وإني تركت ملة قوم لا يؤمن بالله I I have left I I have left a people who don't believe in Allah وهم بالآخرة هم كافرون and they don't believe in the hereafter they don't believe that they're responsible to Allah on the day of judgment وَاتْبَعُهُ مِلَّةَ آبَاءِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبِ وَاتَّبَعْتُ And I follow the Milla, the people, or the nation, or the civilization, آبَاءِ of my forefathers, Ibrahim, Ishaq, and Yaqub. مَا كَانَ لَنَا أَن نُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ It is not for us to make any partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْنَا وَعَلَى النَّاسِ وَلَكِنْ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَشْكُرُونَ But most people don't give thanks. They don't want to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَا صَاحِبِ السُّجْنِ أَرْبَابُ مُتَفَرِّقُونَ خَيْرٌ أَمِ اللَّهُ وَاحِدُ الْقَحَّارِ He said, O oh people, uh, my, uh, you know, my companions of prison, 
Are these many different gods better? خَيْرٌ أَمِ اللَّهُ وَاحِدُ الْقَحَارُ Or having one Allah, one Allah, وَاحِدُ الْقَحَارُ Who is all powerful. Is that better? مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ إِلَّا أَسْمَاءٍ سَمَّيْتُهَا You don't worship. مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ What you worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala إِلَّا أَسْمَاءٍ سَمَّيْتُمُهَا these are names that you gave, you made these things yourself and you gave the names yourself. Antum wa aba'ukum. You and your forefathers have named these things. Ma anzalallahu biha min sultan. Allah has sent no authority for such a thing. In il hukmu, in il, in, in il hukmu illa li lillahi amara alla ta'budu illa iyahu. In il hukmu illa lillah. The command is only with Allah. أَمَرَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّا And his command is that you should worship and do dua to no one other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to sacrifice in no one else's name other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيَّمْ This is the true deen. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most people don't know this, they don't understand this, they don't get this. يَا صَاحِبِ السِّجْنِ أَمَّا أَحَدَكُمْ مَا فَيَسْقِي رَبَّهُ خَمْرَ As for one of you, he will, he will, you know, uh, give drink to his master. He, he will give drink to the king, uh, is what it became at the end. He will, and, and that's how, the, when the king has the dream, he asks, what does this dream mean? And he's the one that came and told him about Yusuf As for the other, he will be crucified, and then the birds will come, and they'll eat from his head. تَأْكِلُ الطَّيْرُ مِنْ رَأْسِ وَقُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ الَّذِي فِيهِ تَسْتَفْتِيَانِ And this is an affair that is going to happen regarding what you've asked. This is exactly what's going to happen to you guys. قَالَ الَّذِي ظَنَّ أَنَّهُ نَاجِمْ مِنْهُمَا And said the one whom he knew, uh, the, the one that would go free, right? The one he knew because of his dream, he knew he would go free. أُذْكُرْنِي إِنْ دَ رَبِّكْ so Yusuf said, look, re remember me in front of your Lord, meaning in front of the king, your master, whoever he will be. فَأَنْسَاهُ shaytan, But shaytan forgot, made him forget. When he was free, now shaytan made him forget, and now Yusuf is in jail. Shaytan uh, Rabbi. He forgot to mention Yusuf to his master. فَلَبِثَ فِي السَّجْنِ بِذَعَ سِنِينَ And he remained in the prison for several years because of this. قَالَ الْمَلَكُ إِنِّي أَرَى سَبْعَ بَكَرَاتٍ سِمَانٍ يَعْكُلُهُ النَّا سَبْعُ إِجَافٍ And then the king said, and that person who had been given the dream about giving wine to his master is there and listening to this, or he heard about this. قَالَ الْمَلِكُ إِنِّي أَرَى سَبْعَ بَكَرَاتٍ سَمَانٍ The king has a dream and he says, look, I had a dream in which I saw seven fat cows. يَعْكُلُهُ النَّا سَبْعُ إِجَافٍ That were being eaten by seven uh, that were being uh, eaten by seven lean cows. وَسَبْعَثْ سُمْبُلَاتٍ خُضْرٍ And I saw seven green, you can say, e spikes or سُمْبُلَاتْ Seven corns, right? Seven ears of corns. وَأُخَرَ يَابِسَاتْ Seven were green, and then others, they were like dry. يَا أَيُّهَا الْمَلَأْ O people of uh, uh, my establishment, the status quo, of Tuni. في رؤيا tell me about this dream إن كنتم لرؤيا تعبرون if you have the interpretation of dreams maybe this dream was happening overly it was bothering and this is why the king didn't bring it up uh, for no reason but there must have been something about this dream that was a uh, repetitive dream or something like this was happening and so so they said the the people that were there they said أدغاث الأحلام this is, seems like some mixture of you know some dream that's mixed وَمَا نَحْنُ بِتَعْوِلِ الْأَحْلَامِ بِعَالِمِينَ And we don't know really how to interpret dreams. قَالَ الَّذِينَ جَّا مِنْهُمَا And said the one who was saved of those two. The one that was saved of بَعْدَ أُمَّةٍ After some time. أَنَا أُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِتَعْوِلِ فَأَرْسَلُونَ So I will tell you the meaning of this dream. Just, you know, send for Yusuf. Okay, so basically send for Yusuf. يوسف أيها الصديق أفتنا في سبع بقرات سمان يأكلهن سبع إجاف. Oh Yusuf, tell us, explain to us the meaning of this dream where seven fat cows are eaten by seven lean cows. 
يأكلون سبع إجاف وسبع سبع سنبلات خضر and seven you can say corns that are fresh and uh, you know the seven ears of uh, corns وأخرى يأبسات and the others are dry لعلي أرجع إلى الناس لعلهم يعلمون so I'll go back to the people and tell them what this dream means قال تزرعوني سبع سنين دأبا so Yusuf said you will plant for seven years consecutively so one after the year فَمَا حَسَدْتُمْ فَزْرَعُوا فِي سُنْبُلِ Now, you know, the harvest, don't take it all off. Leave the harvest on the trees. And this is actually one of the more modern ways and the better ways because the tree has a natural way of protecting its harvest. Okay? Then taking it all out and then the, the maybe the bugs will or the insects will, they'll, they'll, they're more prone to come on the uh, the vegetation at that time. فَزْرُوهُ فِي سُنْبُلِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّا تَعْكُلُونَ Except for the little that you'll eat of, okay? ثُمَّ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكْ سَبْعٌ شِدَادٌ Then you'll leave these harvests there and you'll eat a little bit of it and you're saving it for the bad time to come. Then there will come سَبْعٌ ثُمَّ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكْ سَبْعٌ شِدَادٌ Then seven difficult years will come. يَأْكُلُهُنَّ مَا قَدَّمْتُمْ Then you will consume whatever you have saved of it. Uh, except a little that which you will uh, store. So you will take some out, you'll leave it on the harvest, but then when the seven difficult years come, you'll take some of it, uh, you'll leave some for those difficult years, and then you'll eat in the difficult years from the, what is left on that, and then you'll store some of that. Then there will come after that a year in which people will be given rain and in which there will be يعصرون uh, They will press the juice, meaning uh, the risk will come. وَقَالَ مَلَكُ اِعْتُونِي فَلَمَّا جَاءُ رُسُلْ قَالَ اِرْجِعُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكْ فَأَرْسِلُهُ مَا بَعْلَ نِسْوَ الَّتِي قَتَعْنَ أَيْدِيَهُنَّ Now again, the cutting of the hands of the women is mentioned, which is very interesting. So now when the king heard about this, interpretation of the dream. قَالَ الْمَلَكُ اِتُونِي بِهِ Bring him to me. فَلَمَّا جَاءَ رُسُلْ So when the messenger came to قَالَ اِرْجَعْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّكْ He said, go back to your master, go back to the king. فَاسْأَلْهُ مَا بَالَ النِّسْوَةِ What happened with the women? الَّتِي قَتَعْنَا بِأَيْدِيَهُنَّ They cut their, uh, their hands. About the women that cut their, what was the real? Because he wanted to, he didn't want to leave until his, he was free from the guilt that was put upon him. He is not guilty, he didn't do anything wrong. So he wanted to be uh, uh, brought out with honor. And, in the Rabbi bikaydihinna ali. Indeed, Allah is aware of their plotting and planning. Somebody needs to study the Egyptian civilization at this time. And uh, maybe they can find something with uh, fruits and knives and how they were cut and so on and so forth. So now the king has assembled the women, brought them. He wants to figure out what is why is he not why what does he want to clear you know all this. So Yusuf nafsi. So the king said, "What was your condition when you sought to seduce Yusuf?" They said, Allah is perfect. We don't know anything wrong on the part of Yusuf. He didn't do anything wrong. Qalat Imra'atul Aziz and the wife of Aziz, he's the minister, she said, Al-ana has hasal haq. So she said, now the truth has, you know, has come clear. And ana rawadathu an nafsi. I'm the one who's wanted to seduce him. Wa innahu la minas sadiqeen. Indeed, he is one of the, of the truthful ones. ذَلِكَ لِيَعْلَمَ أَنِّي لَأَخُنْهُ بِالْغَيْبِ This, I, I did this so that my master will know I didn't deceive him. I didn't betray him. I didn't betray my master who took care of me. بِالْغَيْبِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ الْكَيْدَ الْخَائِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide the plan of the people that betray. So now this is the end of the 12th juz. إِنْشَارَةَ عَلَىٰ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي بِإِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِ تَتِمُ الصَّالِحَاتِ I hope, inshallah, Allah makes this a benefit for the people. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Zakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.